Okay, so it's recording on a cloud. And now let me uh, let me uh, share a screen. Okay, and you see here, I share the screen. And unfortunately, <laughs> I have one big screen. Uh, this is Surface Studio because I can on that one, all right? But you can see now all of you, which is five of you now are, uh, you're seeing yourself on it, correct? And seeing me talking, right? Okay. And then do you see my, uh, my uh, email yeah. okay just just do this when i say uh, i'm gonna ask a question I just say one finger up or two fingers up so i know that you are you are up there okay very good so now uh, one other thing is uh, I, I will show you on the navigation you have this uh, uh, if you want to ask any question uh, please just uh, make this um, uh, up, uh, what I call it, uh, uh, such that uh, you wanted to ask a question. So therefore, when I see the raised uh, hand, that means I will let you ask the question. Uh, please uh, don't overdo it, you know, unless uh, you feel that it is uh, important for uh, to follow up uh, right away rather than waiting for a question and answer at the end of it. Okay, so understood. I appreciate your how say, inter interaction during the presentation and just uh, raise a hand and uh, in, then I will give each one of you a chance to ask a question such that we can proceed with the full understanding. All right, this is what I sent you email this morning. Did you get this, all this, uh, this morning? This is an update, what's called an update from Faraday and Tesla until now. And here is one link. But before that, I send you another link, which was, uh, the, which I ask you also to preview before lecture. I sent it last night. So you had a couple of hours to, to look at it. But in any case, let's look. And, and this is your access. So everybody had this uh, access. Well, let me, let me now open this uh, first uh, lecture. Uh, which is recorded on video. By the way, I have a question for all of you. Are you all able to uh, join uh, to my uh, YouTube uh, channel? You know how to access my YouTube channel. Well, Chris, <laughs> you seem to be the only one, uh, but uh, Oria, not uh, Andre Markovic has. Uh, I'll, I'll send you now with the email how, well, I don't even have to send you. Uh, you have access to the my YouTube. How? Because any one of these, either this uh, YouTube or this YouTube, will get you to the particular video I recorded. But once you're on that video, you'll have a uh, fifty or, or hundred or so recorded videos which I recorded uh, and sh while I was making presentation in the previous two online classes, uh, which are useful because they are kind of a summarized they're not all two hours or three hours but summarized a couple of important presentations so you're welcome after today's talk to actually go and uh, look at my youtube uh, channel and what i'm going to what i'm going to uh, doing now and i'll talk more about it after this lecture what is my big plan my big plan is now i have a uh, people who are helping me now with setting up a new website uh not on a Power Electronics uh, LinkedIn Institute, uh, Power Electronics Institute, but setting up Power Electronics Academy uh, website on uh, Facebook, and uh, and being able to, uh, and I'll explain a bit later uh, what is the plan. The plan is to have all of you. Um, maybe uh, right now is appropriate to ask how many of you are already signed up on uh, WhatsApp, which is a special application from it. Listen, I want you to understand one thing. All, listen to me carefully. All Google, uh, including Google Chrome, which I use as a general uh, method to access all of this, the emails on Google, the emails on Outlook Express, on Outlook Microsoft, they're all crap. 
because they are loaded with a bunch of crap. 95% is uh, people advertising. Worse yet, uh, my, uh, let's say, uh, text messages, which used to be something that was relatively personal. Now that was also in, uh, in, in encroached like have a T-Mobile and what happens? I get a 99% of the text messages where people are insistent to uh, leave their, their let's see, advertising, whatnot. So I have a same person going 10 times and putting the same, and there is no way to stop it. At least uh, the uh, t uh, T-Mobile didn't figure it out. Uh, I'm looking now with the iPhone and, uh, and uh, Apple, which has ability to at least, uh, uh, I was trying always, to say T-Mobile, you need to have a, a, a text messages only to those who are in my address book. And I don't respond to anyone who is not in my address book. Anyway, the point I'm making, uh, my future uh, po posting that I'm working now on, will have access to, uh, people have direct one-on-one -on -one access to the WhatsApp. You can apply it for free, it provides you basically that uh, two billion people are connected to it. It's a one one on one encrypted, and I have ability now to generate at least five hundred, but maybe five thousand people who can join on a WhatsApp. And my objective is that uh, my website on a, a Meta uh, Facebook is going to be connected with the people who can join all the time, so you can have a group connection, and we can have a continuous discussions uh, throughout the year. Okay, so that's a basic introduction and let me know how you feel about it. And to start with, if you join as a as individual uh, and you can join with your cell phone, uh, it's like uh, Viber and the main connection is your cell phone. If you have a cell phone, then you can join uh, uh, on a WhatsApp, uh, what we call, uh, give you a, a explanation directly because everything is now cell phone centric. But once you have a cell phone connection, you can use that to uh, make not a web uh, connection, but make a direct connection to your local computer, because then you can have audio, video, chat, uh, you, name, you name it, okay? And then I can set up, uh, if you all set up individual, I can set up a group account for everybody to be connected uh, from now on. Okay, so that's a little bit of a pep talk on that. Okay, so let's now go and open uh, this one. Uh, and this presentation is first I made a, like a shortcut to get you uh, to fully understand what has happened. Oh, by the way, why I am doing this uh, lecture now because I'm in the now process to, of fixing uh, leaving the the money. I'm in a process of uh, fixing the and here it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, I put also the beauty of that is that now all the presentation can be transcribed, you know, so actually uh, what, what, is, what is being said on a video is also shown in English uh, text as a text on it, okay? Uh, and this uh, was my first presentation of Faraday and Tesla, which uh, was made in a different way. It was made that my video presentation was following the script. And then uh, when a script mentions some uh, drawings or some uh, uh, PowerPoint slide, then I add the slide to it. So this has very few slides, but it has, a, how I say, uh, uh, my uh, general talk like this. Uh, the next presentation I'll show you also from Faraday and Tesla is done different. It was live and it was one that I showed the presentation uh, all the slides, and then I'm in a corner making the comments. Okay, so you'll see both ways how I'm doing it, and and I hope you'll find it, uh, I say, uh, enlightening. So now I included a, a capture. So let's let's get started. Okay. Unfortunately, I think I'm. I was hoping that more people will sign up, but look, uh, as I'm recording this now. Uh, that means uh, uh, after this presentation today, I'll send this uh, link to this presentation today. So all the people who are uh, currently uh, registered will be able to review it and, and hopefully be, um, how do you say, 
motivated to join my next presentation, which uh, until I fix this, which will take a couple of weeks, I will send you some of my uh, free webinars to review and then maybe make another video presentation on these critical webinars I gave in the past. Okay, so uh, let's say here why we are doing this. Okay, how do we, okay, here. Now, now you see this whole, correct? You see the whole screen. And then over that is uh, people who are attending. As I said, feel free to raise hand, you know, as a, on this navigation, if you want to have a question, uh, which is important for continuing understanding this presentation. So let's, let's get started. And it's being recorded. So now, <clears throat> This is my tr music introduction to the course. Uh, ready to go. Okay, everybody listen. Uh, I can hear. Okay. Uh, let me uh, tell you this. You know, I have nothing to do with this uh, uh, one in a century uh, cold spell and the storm in Texas. Okay. Uh, comment to that is when I made this in 2021, there was a big storm in Texas. And guess what? The first thing they got is a uh, electrical uh, high voltage distribution line of Nikola Tesla. Uh, you know, were broken and they had uh, suddenly a uh, loss of electricity for a couple of days. And you know, everything runs electricity. So they were in a really horrible uh, shape because then, uh, you know, uh, uh, water uh, didn't uh, get supply, uh, provided, etc. So, and so the, I was just uh, making as a time comment to that, okay. Because some would think that's why I engineered that so we can show how the, Electrical power distribution throughout the world is important and we cannot live without it, okay? And uh, it was just came in time for me to make a point that uh, how important it is electrification that Nikola Tesla, the famous inventor from Yugoslavia and who moved at age 25, coincidentally just about age like I moved, you know, so, and, uh, and changed the world. Uh, and... Uh, one thing that was uh, clear is that uh, uh, Texas didn't maintain uh, their networks, uh, didn't weatherize it. So now what happens is uh, the gas pipes froze and they couldn't uh, use to uh, generate electricity. One nuclear uh, out of four nuclear power plants went down because of the cold weather. Uh, uh, the water pipes and uh, irony is that they had a fire that, uh, fires that they couldn't distinguish you know, because the, the fire hydrants also were not working and so on. So the point uh, making is it is very, very important that uh, life, let's say electricity, electrical utility networks are like bloods, like a, like a blood in a humans. And if it stops working, then nothing works, okay. Okay, now I'll make a, while you are reviewing what, what is put here, uh, uh, I will make a comment, uh, which I will more explain toward the end of today's lectures. Now the time has come that we have to look and consider uh, at something which was impossible at the time of Nikola Tesla and Edison war of currents. As you know, Tesla was uh, uh, advocating his alternating current that he invented, and especially two phase and three phase, his alternating motor, induction motor and synchronous motor. And uh, Edison was straight against it, and he was using his, uh, I say, DC system to show how they, they can very effectively kill the uh, humans, but also he demonstrated killing the elephant, the big elephant. And what it is, you know, 
at, the, at times of Edison, even a Faraday, and as I'll show today, uh, didn't was uh, not recognizing importance of alternating current. A uh, part of a reason because they all thought it's useless because uh, as you have alternating current, a uh, positive cycle will drive the motor in one direction, negative cycle in the opposite direction, and it wouldn't move. So they consider that, you know, that's useless. And as I explained here, Faraday was, uh, and uh, also Maxwell later realized that we really, what is needed is a change. And Faraday established Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, but did not invent a transformer, didn't even consider it. In fact, uh, uh, made a generator, DC generator using a disc and moving the disc inside the magnetic field, you know. And of course, you can get a DC voltage that way, but not much of a DC voltage. But they knew at the time that you can use a transformer, two windings in a primary and secondary. If you interrupt the primary winding with the current, uh, with a switch, uh, then you use a tennis ratio transformer then by turns ratio transformer, you will get the high voltage impulse on a secondary side. And of course, then you can use to kill the elephants, you know, and so on. Or actually the first uh, electrocution was done by uh, using uh, uh, alternate current of Tesla rather than uh, DC current uh, uh, that was not as effective. So, so they tried to, you know, there was a call. And in fact, later, just to briefly explain you, Rate it was uh, Maxwell who proved why you cannot have a, a DC current to on a primary to generate the DC current on a secondary. You need to have a change, and a change of, a, of a current on a primary and only during that time. So basically the transformer is made like a transient device, but not some device which works around the clock uh, with a continuous uh, AC voltage and continuous AC current, okay. So let's continue on, on this. Uh, at the end of the lecture, I'll tell you why now it's a time to for us to switch to high voltage DC transmission and distribution of uh, power. Uh, why? Because now we have all ingredients to it. However, we don't have proper uh, switching DC to DC topology, which will include isolation transformer and provide what just just saying, provide high voltage DC distribution. Uh, what is a common to both that people don't realize is uh, the following. High voltage AC distribution, the Tesla basically pioneered an induction motor and synchronous motor. Uh, it can use a transformer at 60 Hertz and then uh, transfer the power long distances with a two phase, three phase transformer. And then on the uh, other end, step it down to use it. You have, uh, and that transformer does everything except it is at 60 Hertz, which means the size and, and weight and everything and power are proportional, size and proportional to power. So you are, you can use a, kilowatts and megawatts of the power, but you are stuck with a 60 Hertz. However, uh, now we have a 20 kilohertz, just of audio, we can use it. However, what I'll show you that all this uh, uh, power switch mode power electronics went in the wrong direction for like 50, 60 years and used what I call any place you use inductor I call it now fake inductors, and actually my, you will see more in my class uh, uh, when we get uh, fully going, because back boost and flyback, uh, especially flyback, uh, things sh should have never been invented in my point, okay? And why? Because we can do now everything, step up, step down with a transformer and without any kind of a fake inductors, okay? Uh, and because these inductors, I call them fake because they're not AC inductors. That's a key problem. Uh, and uh, most of these uh, isolated converters are also fake because they, they don't provide uh, true uh, isolation and for I like, explain. Okay, so let's now continue on this way and uh, in a preparation for a big bang at the end. Actually, they were in New York and, and uh, West, never remember uh, or learn about it. 
there were many uh, blackouts in New York. There was one famous blackout in 1965, and there were many after that. And that 65 blackout, I think the blackout, there were uh, 3 million people in uh, New York and number of uh, uh, states in the United States, even in Canada, were blacked out for a couple of days. And the thing is, they uh, that was a nice blackout, if I can call it. They lost uh, power. They lost uh, lights. People couldn't, couldn't go to restaurants. In any, so they were stuck like we were now with uh, staying at home. And they said, statistics show that uh, nine months later, just to the date, there was a sudden spike in a new birth in New York. Okay. So that's related, it seems like related to that blackout. Okay. Okay. So now getting back to this here, I think uh, it is a uh, uh, tribute to uh, Nikola Tesla that in uh, just, spent, just to put the things in perspective, and I want to put a general introduction so we see where I'm coming from. Uh, one of the uh, mysteries is what has historically, who contributed what, and subject of my presentation today is who really invented the transformer. And I'll just give you a summary of what you're going to see uh, basically uh, introduced uh, in this lecture and backed it up with uh, some uh, uh, material and documents. It is well known that, and one thing is uh, what we should know just uh, now, that uh, now is 200 years when humanity first time realized connection between, between electricity and magnetism. It was long 2000 before that, that there is a raw, there is a, there is magnet that you can, uh, that attracts another magnet. So there was magnetism. Electricity came much later, around 1810 or so, Volta come up and developed uh, uh, with uh, Galvani and Volta actually developed a battery to have a continuous source rather than using rubbing and generating the electricity by uh, uh, charges uh, on so on. Anyway, in 1821, it was Erstad, Danish physicist, who made experiment where he put a DC Volta battery and conducted a DC current and found out because that time people used a magnetic needle for a compass to navigate. And he found out, yeah, the current, this uh, current in a wire uh, causes a force of magnetic needle to orient in particular direction. And uh, then it was Ampere around that time, he came with Ampere circuit row, who established a quantitative relationship, how much DC current generates uh, 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 what kind of force on a, a magnet at certain uh, radius away from uh, uh, from this uh, uh, current carrying uh, DC current carrying conductor? Okay, the point is, uh, uh, my second presentation will talk more about and show this uh, Rested experiment, which established connection between electricity and magnetism in 1821, and then uh, everybody was uh, uh, all, in awe of that and trying to. Uh, generate uh, constant current to generate on a primary to generate constant current on a secondary. However, it was Maxwell who uh, really followed up after the Faraday and uh, proved that you can't do that, you know, and why and explain it in a physical uh, sense, why you need a change of the input current in order to create a change of the output uh, current. And no way to make a transformer which should be DC to DC transformer, no such thing. And uh, and unfortunately, that also pro proved the point that both uh, Faraday, as great they are, and that's why I call this uh, lecture today also tribute to Faraday and Maxwell, but they both missed the importance of alternating voltage and alternating current. Uh, but of course, they are great in, in themselves because they set the stage for a Tesla who came uh, after that and, and was able to introduce uh, alternating generators and alternating motors. Okay, so that's, I'll discuss that and 
and also find it now how now we have uh, all the tools available, but we need the right convert topology and try to make uh, emulate what would look like DC to DC transformer. What that means? DC input voltage, DC input current, DC output voltage, DC output current. But in the me in the me in the middle, some place is an isolation transformer operating at twenty kilohertz or higher, which actually is by turns ratio able to step up and step down voltage. So that means once we have this uh, situation, we can, we can think about high voltage DC transmission conducting the power under like um, signals under with uh, cables uh, um, transferring the uh, signals uh, uh, from uh, you know uh, Atlantic Ocean and so on, but uh, from US to Europe. But now we can use a power uh, that can be actually embedded inside the below the ground. So you wouldn't have this ugly dist uh, distribution line, which uh, because of AC and, and other corona effect, et cetera, they have to be at a very high uh, post uh, carrying this high voltage current and uh, not to cause interaction and uh, discharge. So therefore there's some uh, great benefit of being able to transmit the power with the high voltage DC. Uh, but one thing what is uh, also uh, important is uh, that high voltage DC or DC DC voltage and DC current. What is the product of DC voltage and DC current? On input, constant power. On output, constant power. What does it mean? There is no storage. Just like Tesla two-phase, three-phase system, there is no storage. Why is that important? Because the people who are nowadays, and let me put my uh, 10 cents to what uh, Elon Musk is doing. He, he actually created uh, uh, and convinced the Australian government uh, to make, a, a, how you say, big batteries uh, backup. So he's creating DC power uh, on, a, on a batteries and uh, feeding the AC utility line, which requires a big uh, conversion from uh, uh, DC to alternating current. But the best point, he doesn't understand, you know, that you can make a five megawatt battery storage. When, why? Because we can't even put the 50 kilowatts in a car. You know, and and yet uh, he's uh, dreaming about this uh, nonsense of uh, supporting utility alternative grind uh, with the batteries. And we're at the at the point missing the key point that alternating current of Tesla two phase and three phase does not store any energy. One percent is used just for circulate and create a flux in a core, and ninety nine percent is with the speed of light transfer from primary to secondary. So you can have a power generated in Niagara Falls and then with the high voltage distribution line, which are very efficient because a very high voltage, low current can be sent to Los Angeles and immediately used to run factories, run motors, et cetera. So what a waste and what a bullshit that I call, but nobody calls him on it. You know, he's a visionary, you know, visionary and he can, visionary now in exploring his rocket, you know, and hopefully the next time when they send the, the astronauts with it, then, then all astronauts won't be blown up. But anyway, this is my take on it, you know, granted the very uh, personal, but the reason is because I, I think, I feel he is uh, very much exposed and uh, everything he, he puts out is made to like God sent, but yet he doesn't have basic understanding. He never really finished the, uh, he was like, I don't know, physics uh, st student at Stanford and never fi finished it, you know, um, uh, quit. Okay, back to the subject. So let's go further. And you know what? It's interesting part is that at uh, 1821, uh, Faraday, who was then already at the uh, uh, age uh, to uh, participate in the science, he tried like everybody else to do the opposite. So, well, if the constant current, DC current can generate the force on a magnet, 
can we have a permanent magnet and generate a constant current in a wire? Of course, this turned out to be impossible goal. And he was trying it like everybody else at the time for 10 years from 1821 till 1831 to do exactly that. And in the process, he did make a DC generators which turned out to be useful, useless uh, at the time and never really came up to anything, but using his disk and rotating and so on, magnetic disk and uh, mechanical current converting to DC voltage. But in 1831, he came to his famous experiment that he was trying to establish connection between electricity and magnetism and force the constant uh, magnetic force to generate the, the constant current. He didn't succeed because he a uh, story goes that in a room, uh, he had a very uh, big switch and he made a transformer, which I'll show you. It is now basically in uh, a museum of science and uh, in London, a Royal Museum in London, and a special room devoted to Faraday. And in Faraday's room, there was a transformer, really looks like a transformer, it is. It was a big toroidal core with a primary winding, secondary winding. And what did he do? He put on a primary side, <laughs> They considered this alternating current as useless because, let's face it, if you get a sinusoidal current, you have positive, uh, it will force the motor to go in one direction, and if you have negative part of sinusoidal current, it will drive the motor in the other direction, which means it won't move. So, gave up on that. Uh, you could do that. Terms ratio of uh, change okay. of the current. Which Let me make a point here. You guys are in switchboard power conversion. <laughs> okay. Let me give you a couple of things uh, which shows uh, that actually Faraday did not invent, a, he invent a, a law electromagnetic induction and use the transformer like uh, and the whole point is that the people now assumed I don't know, two, four, five, someone Else joined? I, I didn't see. It. Let's see. Yeah, there's another one that joined. Please join with the audio and video. Okay, whoever is joining. You know, I'd like everybody to join who can join the video. Okay. So let me uh, continue on this point. You know, switch mode power conversion. How many? Let, let's have a raise of hand and see how many of you have, uh, let's say, I'm trying to get. Uh, you can't buy great conversations or moments that matter, but you can invest in them. At T. Rowe Price, our strategic investing approach can help you build the future you imagine. T. Rowe Price, invest with confidence. Hi, Super Sally. This is Sam. How may I help you? Who is talking? I don't understand. I, I don't understand who is so talking. I think about that. The consumer value is the same exact coverage as the main carriers, but are on behalf of can you can you figure out who is going to be It's bringing new life. It's Frederick. Uh, Frederick, I think. It's great silver projects in America is about to get bigger. Black rock silver. What is happening? I don't know. Uh, Frederick, please mute yourself. Do you see? Do you see who is actually interrupting this? I think, Dr. Shu, you can mute all the audience so uh, the background noise not to annoy the listener. The background noise, listen, I actually signed up for a, a YouTube premium such that there will be no interruption with the bullshit. Uh, uh, other people uh, uh, interrupting with the advertising, but okay, let's stop by now. I have a question for you, and Sammy, me yeah, yes and no. And the question is, how many of you are familiar with the flyback converter? Raise, raise your hand. Okay, I I don't see everybody. Okay, everybody is uh, uh, familiar with flyback converter. Some people in our field 
claim flyback is fantastic. You know, uh, you don't you you have only one switch on the input side and and diode on a transistor on the input side and and on a secondary you have a diode flyback converter. It can step up voltage and can step down. Doesn't have inductor in it. It is a transformer. This is a fake transformer. You understand? Because the flyback is when you turn the switch on, you store energy in magnetic core, and you can store it because uh, it is a uh, uh, it will be um, the uh, magnetic uh, uh, core cannot take only very a little primary current, which is a magnetizing current, which is one percent of the load current, and therefore it work. It will be basically a, how say dead end. Uh, it will be saturating, and core magnetic core instead of having huge magnetizing inductance it will be shorted. So secondary will be shorted. So if you put a switch on it, all you need to do is to make a flyback transformer. What? You put a diode on the secondary side, right? And then you're operating a transformer with the storing energy in a core and then releasing it from a core into the output. Flyback transformer. You can use the turns ratios to step up, step down, no inductance, great. Except it is not transformer. It is an energy storage inductor. It has a DC bias. And when it has a DC bias, what is the problem? You have to put an air gap in it. And you know what? If you put an air gap of one millimeter or less, irrespective of cross section, one millimeter or less, what you're going to get? You're going to get uh, kill inductance uh, of ferrite core, which uh, has a, a relative probability of four to 10,000. You're going to kill it by 4,000. And you, this is going to look like a, like a, um, essentially like a air core uh, transformer with no magnetized inductance, which with no uh, large in, uh, ability of the core, which means uh, it's useless. It becomes an air core uh, uh, transformer, you know, because uh, it, it has a huge uh, current, you know. But the funny thing is. Hello. Caesar. 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 We bought that a long time ago, but it is an XL. Okay. They got six houses going on at the same time. What? Two, two things. About the same time. Same time. Let, me, let me stop sharing for a second and see where that comes from, because I think we can see here uh, uh, on YouTube. I guess I can look at my YouTube and see uh, what is the uh, interference. Okay, we are learning. You know, it's uh, unfortunately. Turned out my course was today. What? I started late, but I didn't miss much. Well, that's a real uncommon carcinoma. That's a skin. Yeah. Very uncommon. Very fast growing. Like you get that, you know. Yeah. Let's It's a piece of the New York Post about an overlooked sign of cancer, and that would be trouble swallowing. Doctor, that sounds like a bit of a scare to me. What do you mean? Well, dysphagia is very common, and that's the thing. That's when you have difficulty swallowing. You need to see a doctor if you have difficulty swallowing right away. Uh, you, 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 can't, you can't wait. And uh, it's associated with head and neck cancers, and it's associated with... Um, <laughs> it's it's associated with head and neck cancers and it's associated with cancers of the esophagus. So you have to be seen right away with that with that particular uh, type of thing. Doctor, I suspect you've got a couple of dermatologists who for that. If you will be still, who's in the list? Professor Cook, I think it's uh, the voice is coming from Frederick. The C D C right again. again. Uh, the voice is coming from Frederick. 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 From where? From? It's a problem. Is you see here? I have premium. That's not supposed to interfere with uh, my presentation, and I don't know. It's just a. Uh, Kind of random. So I'll have to figure out and 
talk to YouTube and find out what the hell is going on. Okay, sorry. Professor Chuk, if, if you could mute everyone except yourself, it's coming from Frederick. Um, you know, it's pretty clear that it's coming from him. And I, I think you have the ability to mute everybody. I don't think anybody else does. Okay, so if I mute it and you see it's coming from whom? Frederick, who is the Frederick? Frederick Crowfoot. Uh, So let's say if I uh, mute everybody, uh, let's see here. So you think that someone purposely uh, joined and then uh, is hiding it, so he's uh, putting his own uh, uh, his own talks to interrupt my lectures. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean the the audio was coming right, from Frederick. But what do you see? Frederick, what do you mean? A particular name? What do you mean, Frederick? Frederick Crawford. Uh, can you? Uh, you see, uh, I can actually on my presentation, I can uh, actually include. Let's say. Here, and uh, I can. Uh, Include this. Uh, see. Uh, Other, I am muted. He's, he is not muted. Um, listen. Uh, let me uh, do this. I think. Uh, Yes, I can mute everybody. See here, I can mute everybody, right? So now everybody is muted, and you're right. I'm, I'm the only one who is talking, right? Is that that should uh, solve the problem? You are not muted, everyone. Oh, oh, oh! I see. That's the Frederick Crawford, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, correct. So someone joined. Let let's uh, let's do this. Let's mute him. And then uh, done deal, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Now he is muted, and uh, and then uh, I can. Un First of all, now I see that he is on a on a list enclosed. This is Frederick Crawford. How I can? How it's not. Uh, He's not showing his face, then uh, uh, I have mute him. But I have, I can now unmute it, and because I have have him on the list, and only mute him. Correct. So that's what it is. Let's let's do this. Uh, and then where is that, Frederick? No, this is everybody is uh, muted. I, I want to uh, everybody unmute. I'm unmuted. What is it? Okay, let me do this. After I mute, uh, you are all muted, then I can uh, unmute, mute. Now they're all muted. I, I Let me go to this uh, chat. Uh, you see here, now I have a control meeting chat. Uh, and everybody has here, here, my audio is not working yet. I will put 10 hours on black outside there inside. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Your co co uh, correction is okay. Uh, now we have this uh, Frederick Crawford and uh, 
He is muted now. Can I unmute each one of you? Ask to unmute. Hello, Dr. Chu, can you hear me? Who is calling? Who is calling? This guy, Frederick Crawford, is uh, muted, but I think I can have a list here who are there, and hopefully I can uh, block him out completely, not only mute, but completely. So, and uh, then I will report this guy to be uh, another hacker, you know? He, he may not even be under this name. He, he may be inventing this name and just to show up to stop my lectures. And uh, new messages, this is a message. Uh, oh, what happened? This guy's removed himself. When I made, a, when I made this uh, <laughs> threat, threat, he removed himself. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, he went, he exited. What? He gone outside. He exited from the class. Yeah, but, you know, he's playing the game. You know, he... He is off the class and then he joins the class whenever he wants. So I need to find out how to navigate it. Now you can see my pain uh, with this course. There's so many evil people in this world. So many evil people. We have to find them and put them in prison, in jail. End of story. Right? right? You know, I'm trying to do an honest lecture and so on. And I get these assholes. Uh, to uh, to stop my presenting, and he's probably alter ego. He has different uh, name, and uh, and he's uh, another hacker, and so on. And and that's horrible. But because I never had that, but uh, I I think next time uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, and I avoided that because I thought it was pretty safe. I when I started this online classes several years ago, I had actually everybody who signed in and so-called they would sign in and I would would let them in and I had a control the people will sign in and we, we'll have a list of the people who actually sign up for a course so we couldn't have someone coming on the site uh, jumping on a course but to have this evil guy you know a fraudster to come on a course and in and out and so on uh, I, I'll, I think uh, this sign up took a quite a bit of time. So that's why I wanted to avoid it. You know what I say, understand? I wanted to avoid to, you know, as the people join, uh, authorize, this guy wants to join and I authorize it, that guy wants to join and so on. But now because I provided this uh, general link, uh, a, a shortcut and everybody can join because, you know, with my shortcut, I, I'm not authorizing anybody. Anybody who has this shortcut link and he knows that I'm going to lecture now can join. And now I realize that's a really serious problem. And I'll have to, in a future lecture, have to basically, how say, uh, uh, eliminate it. Uh, or at least find a way where someone joins that I don't have to look at the list. I simply uh, have ability not just mute him, but, uh, but stop him of accessing, you know, period. Uh, but right now, let's see, uh, you guys uh, are all muted. Let's see how I can unmute all of you and then have a walk, uh, have a look. And whenever he comes on, just mute him. Because I think uh, there should be a way that uh, that I can mute any individual person, which is which would be good on a Zoom, because that means if someone joins, I don't care if he can show his face, but he cannot interrupt with the audio, right? So uh, let's see how we fix that. Can we, uh, uh, let's say, speaker... Uh, none of you. Can anybody of you uh, use a voice? Can I hear anybody of you? Are you? Uh... Can you hear me, Dr. Chuk? Who is that? Andre? Asad, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. What about you others? What about Vasily? So it looks like everyone can uh, can unmute yeah, themselves. Can hear oh, everybody yeah, can unmute okay. I can, I can hear Listen, you. Uh, that, that's great because finally, uh, you see, some of you, like Asad, you still have a that your microphone is muted. I don't understand. You just talk to me and then... Uh, yeah, it's, it's working. I, I I muted myself. Oh, you... Okay, don't play the game. I, I have enough of these uh, jerks, you know, that you now play the game, muted and muted, okay? So at least now, Vasilya, you say thing. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Then apparently when you start talking, it removes this uh, microphone bullshit, right? Because the micros show that you're not uh, on a... On a uh, but now they're all... Let's go back to my presentation. You are now all on it with the sound. And if the other guy comes on, I think I can... Each particular guy, I can mute. And then done deal. Then we solve the problem at least. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, let's get back to my... Uh, uh, how to say share screen? No, what I'm saying, I don't need this uh, chat. Uh, okay, so I have no chat. And then we go to the uh, presentation, and uh, that is when I was before Google Chrome. I can go to my uh, e uh, email, open it up. And uh, and yes, uh, uh, okay. I'll just be patient until I find out. Uh, uh, Mason. Update. Okay. I'm here on it, so now I'm going to share the screen. Now you see my screen, right? And you're all on it, so I'm going to watch. And you uh, you let me know when this guy showed up, uh, uh, you know, voice your thing, and then I will just mute him, okay? And I still have, a, I mean, you still show that your Microsoft is muted, okay? Can you unmute? Yes, I am fine. I I self my self muted myself. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, don't confuse me, please, because same thing, Andre, because uh, your microphone is muted, so I don't know if uh, if you uh, can say something or not. Okay, so unmute. yeah, in general, I think it's a good practice, Professor Chuk. Uh, if uh, someone is not uh, speaking to self mute themselves, so not to annoy the other audiences with the background noise. That's why, and whenever I am, I want to speak, I will try to. Um, uh, Okay, unmute myself I, and then go ahead. Yes, I mean, but I don't know that the people are sophisticated like you are. Most of the people you know, don't have a non uh, microphone or so on. And uh, for me, it's important because of the things like happen now, you see, because that will give me control. Maybe in the future, I may have uh, more than one guy who is uh, trying to interrupt things. And then uh, as we see who that guy is, uh, we'll show that his uh, I microphone is on, and I just mute these guys, and uh, and that way is a shortcut that I don't have to spend uh, half an hour to trying to get everybody on board. Okay. So Chris, Ahmed, Andre, uh, you are not muted. You can you don't show the video for a reason that you said a network conversion and so on. Okay, uh, let's go back to my presentation and. Uh, see where we are at uh, now. So you see my uh, my uh, screen with the email, correct? Yes. Because I shared it, right? And we'll go to that first uh, first presentation and find where we where we stopped it. Okay, okay. Here. And she noticed that during this transient, the sudden change of the switch is actually causing the change of the current. So I made a comment, just to repeat it, comment that we are this close to use a flyback, but the flyback doesn't is not a transformer. It it is a you see the people in the flyback assume if a flyback converter can step up and step down. Oh, and it's isolation. Step up and step down in improved voltage. Well, that's what this circuit does without the diode on a secondary, right? It can kill a elephant, you know, with, with this kind of thing. One one turn of primary, a thousand turns of secondary will make hundred volt DC battery, make make it in ten thousand volt and kill them uh, elephant, right? But that's a transient uh, feature and not uh, the the real transformer. So transformer having DC uh, having ability to step up and step down and having ability to how you say. Uh, uh, provide isolation, which is apparently have because it's in, uh, there are no uh, electrical connection or primary and secondary ground. So uh, isolation and uh, 
step up and step down feature is not enough for a transformer. For a transformer to be a transformer, and I have a, a, another lecture, and then we can go with that if you have time, but uh, which sem says, says the transformer has to be such that like an AC transformer. The magic of AC transformer is because it's driven by not by DC, but alternating current it automatically uh, provides, uh, how I say, high magnetized current and uh, alternating current on a secondary. But the point is that transformer does not store the energy. Secondary current is reflected to the primary, subtracted from the uh, input current and the uh, difference between input current and output current is a very small magnetizing current, which is an AC current. So uh, I'll give you another of uh, my experience, how, how backward is this called power electronics? I had battled for years with a, a Plex, Plexim company, which uh, I used uh, their software for many years since uh, 19, whatever, 2016 or so. And uh, I was advising them, please don't don't confuse the people and don't give them a model of transformer with the turns ratio only. That's stupid. You understand why? Because a transformer, which has a, if you, and they, they provide a turns ratio as a model of perfect transformer. Okay, perfect transformer. It doesn't include leakage inductance. Fine, I'll, I'll buy that, even though they're stupid because you have to include the uh, leakage inductance. But the problem is when I tell them, when you use the only turns ratio for a transformer, what you are doing, you are in your software, you are reflecting secondary side to the primary side, but doesn't tell you whether that quote transformer has an AC current. We got rid of Crawford, okay? Great, thank you very much. Okay, I didn't have to mute him, I just removed him, all right? So that means Zoom is working. I, I can now, from now on, use that, and whenever we see someone intruding on that, we just kill, kick him out. Okay, getting back uh, to the transformer. Uh, so what, what that uh, says is that the key property of a transformer is that it doesn't store energy. And I told them for years, please don't give the stupid turns ratio of a transformer without including an inductance in the primary side. Then what will happen? When you do simulation with a program, then you look what is the current on that inductance. If that current is an AC current and there no DC uh, current in it, there is a transformer. If it is not, and it has a DC bias on it, it's a bullshit like a flyback converter, okay? And I uh, says, uh, say that with a con conviction that the flyback transformer is the worst thing what happened to switching converters. Why? Because it is the same thing, like uh, what is the difference? A buck inductor is not inductor, as I showed in, a, in a other presentation. It is a fake inductor because it is inductor because the filter on the output, LC filter, that inductor conducts all the DC current to the output. So therefore, uh, that, that, uh, that cannot be uh, made as an AC inductor. It's a DC inductor with the bias, which means you have to put air gap and then instead of a magnetic core doing something, it's not doing anything and, and basically becomes a short. And you will, you will actually act like the short unless you put an air gap. So, so that's the point I'm making is the whole, and of course, why is the flyback magic that the people think it's a magic? Because flyback has boost converter has input inductor connected the input DC source. Uh, uh, back has a uh, output inductor com connected to the output DC. Flyback has a inductor, un un non-isolated flyback has inductor connected to the ground, okay? So if it is connected to the ground, you split it into two windings and the uh, flyback is two winding inductor where you store energy in a inductor on a primary with the input switch. And when the input switch turns off, stored energy in inductor is through the secondary inductor 
a transfer to the output. And because this inductor is with one way connected to ground, you break a, a ground conduction and you call that isolation. Yes, but it's not a transformer. It does isolation, that step up and step down, but it's not a transformer. It is energy storage device. And I I get uh, long discussions with a professor, whatever, Ben Yakov, he, he is extolling these uh, things and I was putting all over. And and uh, on, on YouTube, a lot of people uh, jump on it and you know he's a great he understands he understand nothing you know he's just uh, uh, he's he I don't know twenty thousand people people for him which is a disgrace because he's uh, giving them a wrong a wrong uh, uh, impression what is the transformer is going oh flyback has a it's a transformer isolation and so on but they don't understand they don't understand what a transformer is the same thing the people who are doing this uh, uh, simulation software program plex they couldn't. Uh, by a very simple thing, what I suggested them. There are other problems with it. When we were chance in my future lectures, I'll tell them about you. I'll share that, and I'll teach you how to use Plex software such that you can really, instead of getting uh, in, uh, you know, long time a simulation of five six minutes, and then at the end it says doesn't converge. I'll give you one which, uh, uh, with the use of my state space averaging, which I'll teach teach you in a course. You can actually give initial condition, which are just right. DC levels on inductors and DC voltage on capacitor is starting point. Then in a subsection section uh, of second, like a uh, hundred millisecond and so on, you'll get results and you get correct results. Okay. So the whole thing is polluted with the nonsense, you know, and which I'm trying to solve. And and hopefully you can be the 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 generation who does that. Okay. I'm glad we got rid of this guy. So at least we can continue. So Let's uh, let's uh, go further. So I told you here what is important is if this is a transformer, you have to have inductance as a physical inductance, and then uh, get the simulation result to show you what is the current. If that current has no zero average, forget it. It's not a transformer. It is a flyback nonsense. Okay. All right. Let's go further. In your output. So this is a burst of his law of electromagnetic induction. You have to have change of the current, which results in the change of the flux, which results in uh, induced voltage on a primary and induced voltage on a secondary. So you could see on a secondary change of voltage. Okay. Now, also at that time, you would be able to use a turns on a transformer and use a turns ratio. So if you use a turns ratio of uh, 100 to 1 on, from primary to secondary, if you use this source of input and you uh, switch it on and off during on and off period, you would induce the high voltage by a factor of 100 to 1 on a secondary compared to primary. Well, if you wanted to zap someone or kill, you could do that, all right? But it was not sustaining current. It was not continuous. It was not permanent. And in fact, for next 50 years, the whole world gave up on that uh, because they were trying, they considered this alternate current as useless because, let's face it, if you get a sinusoidal current, you have positive, uh, it will force the motor to go in one direction, and if you have negative part of sinusoidal current, it will drive the motor in the other direction, which means it won't move. So you needed to rectify it. So everybody was of making the generator, DC generator, by rectifying internally generated AC uh, current and AC voltage, rectifying it, and externally shows a DC voltage and DC current using complex, complex uh, commutators and uh, uh, mechanical commutators, which are rectified. Of course, the Tesla was first time in 1882 to some 51 years after Faraday, uh, realize that the, there is a two processes happening which are reversible, that every machine uh, is could be used as an AC generator as well as AC motor. Depend, and you can convert, uh, how you say, convert uh, mechanical power into electrical power generators. And therefore, for the first time, you were able to drive the same set up that uh, Faraday had, 
transformer with big, with big primary, big secondary, big core of iron, which is magnetic material with high permeability. And you could actually drive that and use it as a, uh, as a source of transmitting higher voltages on. It makes a comment. You see, the, uh, to make it simple, I made a point here uh, that is actually not correct. I made the point that you have sinusoidal voltage on a primary, you have trans ratio transformer, uh, at whatever, 60 hertz, and then you have motor on a secondary. No. What, what I showed is just conceptually what you need at the minimum, which Tesla showed by introducing so-called polyphase voltages and polyphase current, you need at least two phase AC voltages, 90 degrees out of phase to provide magne uh, rotating magnetic field. And then if you have a synchronous motor, synchronous motor has a, a two a phase binding on a stator and have a magnet, permanent magnet in the center and a permanent magnet will follow uh, whatever uh, this rotating field is. So you can control the speed. That's what, what is basically how the electric cars works now with a Tesla motor in it. Uh, but you need at least two phase uh, input and you get two phase output. However, yes, you can, you don't need, uh, and, and uh, that is reversible because that uh, motor uh, can actually work backwards as a generator. Although some of the motors are like induction motor is optimized as a motor and it's lousy as a, as a generator, you know? Uh, and the same, then the problem with the synchronous motor uh, and synchronous generators that uh, you have to, bring it up to synchronism to, to do it. So anyway, my point is that then people are making these days uh, comments and say, oh, well, you know, you can, uh, 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 way before the Tesla people realized that you can use alternating current to drive. If this is a not motor, if this is a resistor, and if the resistor is instead the, the um, lamp, which is a Edison lamp. Edison uh, was driving their lamp with DC, but there is no reason why you couldn't run, uh, drive a lamp with AC. And uh, in fact, uh, before Tesla invented rotating magnetic field and motors and generators and polyphase current and high voltage distribution uh, and so on, uh, some people suggested and say, hey, we can use a, uh, what looks like a transformer as a single phase transformer driving the lamp. And yes, they did that. But they, they're not really inventors of the transformer in a true sense, because this one is just by definition uh, when it is resistor, uh, and this is a dot connection. So that means resistor will have a current drawing from a, a dot and driving the voltage into resistor. Or current is getting out of the dot, but reflected that current on a primary is current into the dot. And this current is out of the dot. That's meaning of the dot connection. What that means is that, yes, the reflected secondary resistive current is reflected to the primary, and the input current is uh, larger by magnetizing current of a transformer, which is very small. So therefore, uh, the beauty of a transformer uh, for a transfer uh, driving the lamp and so on, that indeed, in a single phase transformer, you ex essentially uh, have a magnetizing current which is different, then you don't need all these other things in lens law, blah, 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 because here it is all done automatically with the dot connection. So, so therefore, and the beauty of a transformer is, and that's why I'm driving now when we get to my concluding remarks, I'm driving that the beauty of a transformer is that 60 Hertz transformer has everything into it. Uh, by driving it with the AC voltage, Everything is done automatic. Forget about lens law and so on. Uh, you're driving the resistor, that's fine. Now, different story. If you drive the motor and motor has inductance, then you can't do that, you know? And you have to drive it with a, a two-phase uh, winding on a stator and a, a generator, two-phase generator, and then drive two-phase induction motor, you know? So that's the beauty of it. But the point is that I'm making now what is needed, and let me give you the, the driving point, which I came to the conclusion after so many years working in this field. I don't want to waste your time now because we don't have it, but in a, my uh, detailed lecture, uh, I will show you how I went through at least four or five different ways for making new transformer for high frequency. My chuk converter was having, a, instead of sine wave voltage driving it, it's square wave. 
And like square wave, it's uh, average. Average is zero. So the like a sine wave has a zero voltage. Uh, uh, like sine wave has a volt second balance. So yes, when I have a my true converter volt second balance, and but what is needed? This one here, as I say, when a resistor is here, it has a charge balance automatically, 60 hertz, no switches, nothing, but automatically the current drawn into the resistive load reflected on a primary and you have a charge balance. You understand? So the transformer can make a lot of magnetism inductance and single phase transformer charge balance. Now, if you want to make a DC to DC converter, what that means with isolation, galvanic isolation and no storage, then you, what you need to do is have a converter topology with DC voltage on input uh, draws the DC current from the input and DC voltage on the output draws the DC current to the output. What that means that input power in that DC magic DC to DC converter fancy has a constant input power and the same constant output power. The only difference is this small magnetic current, which is 1% of the power. You see what I'm saying? So basically we have in a DC to uh, transformer, we have a built-in uh, volt second balance on the primary and charge balance between primary and secondary, right? And when I invented the true converter, I made a converter which is driven by square wave voltage and deliver a square wave current on the output. But then the magnetizing current on the input has a square wave voltage. What is square wave voltage do, going to do with large magnetizing inductance? Make triangular small ripper current. That's the only difference. And that transformer has the same uh, property that you have a, uh, uh, it satisfies uh, because I had input and output inductances and a capacitor on both sides. Then I made artificially that square wave voltage on the input uh, is drawn square wave current on the input and square wave voltage on the output, square wave current on the output. So basically input power and output power is constant. And the difference is small uh, circulating current and, and power stored in magnetizing inductance, which is near. Magnetizing inductance doesn't store power. It just changes from uh, positive to negative flux. So therefore it's just uh, re returning back. So it's uh, what I'm trying to say is you need to make a converter uh, such that if you want to do DC to DC conversion, uh, this this did it, square wave. And in fact, my true converter did it not only for square wave because it had a capacitance on input and basically it had a volt second balance on a primary and secondary by that definition. Uh, and it had a uh, inductance on output, inductance on input, had a uh, DC current transformation and uh, no storage. But uh, what is was problem because it had square wave voltage and flow with the square wave current. In the transition, you have a voltage dropping to zero, current coming from zero to peak uh, DC current. So in that small transition, you have a big pulse of transient parcel energy stored in a transi transition, right? So what happened is uh, if you have a high frequency, the high frequency, you multiply the energy storage in that transition to uh, to the to the Basically, uh, energy storage in the transition is lost in a power. Uh, in another word, uh, power loss per cycle times the frequency of that. So it's proportional to frequency, horrible. And that's even not accounting the leakage inductance, which is a special factor. But now I'll teach you in this course, uh, this magic, um, what I call a PWM resonant converter, which looks like a, a resonant converter, smells like a resonant, but it's actually a regulated pulsing modulation. And what, what is the magic of it is that basically, then you have to make sure that the transitions are lossless. So how do you get that? Zero voltage switching on uh, input uh, two transistors or four transistors, active switches, and zero current switching on the output secondary side with the diode, great. And what happened at the same time? No energy storage and leakage inductance, 99% efficiency, right? So that's what I'm saying, you know. Uh, but now I graduate to another, uh, Point where I can make a now that transformer uh, not uh, proportional to the frequency, but by the uh, topology uh, connection and structure, make it much less uh, even at the 50 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz switching, because then you minimize all the 
losses, construction losses, and so on, and uh, you don't have any losses due to the uh, lousy transformer. And eliminate the uh, storage uh, uh, loss, storage on the uh, leakage inductance, eliminate storage on the uh, input and output switches, and then in fact uh, still have control by controlling due to ratio of the of the input switches to to provide the high uh, high frequency isolation with no storage and 99% efficiency. Anyway, let's move further because we don't have time much. So like a continuous periodic dry running. Of course, before, in between 1831 until uh, uh, 1882, uh, there were Pixie and some other who actually determined, yeah, you can drive this primary with the alternating voltage they can generate it and guess what? Edison light bulb is just a resistor. So you can put on a second Edison light bulb and power it for lighting. So there was some effort in between to make a, a lighting using alternating single phase, of course. But the first time when Tesla demonstrated after 1882 in 1893, uh, uh, he demonstrated the first power, uh, first. Um, transmission of the power uh, from Niagara Falls, uh, where he had generators and mechanical energy is converted into his synchronous three-phase generators. And then that power from a few hundred volts is transferred with the transformer, which are using as a step up to high voltage. Then he had a high voltage three-phase transmission link to um, Buffalo, which is 25, 26 miles away. Why? Because they needed tens of thousands of current there to convert uh, bauxite into the aluminum with electrolysis. So it needs a lot of currents at the uh, volt. And then, of course, there you transform in opposite direction and go from high voltage transmission line down to the low voltage DC. Okay. Uh, my comment to this uh, I'm not having a time to do that, but since you have access to my YouTube lectures, one of the lectures is. Uh, uh, my lecture a long time ago, uh, when I was uh, 43 or something, uh, uh, at Hughes uh, Aircraft, you know, and uh, I demonstrated, uh, I have also demonstrations for a rotating magnetic field. And here is a contraption, uh, two ways. One is uh, that there is a toroidal transformer, uh, which have, uh, operates at 60 hertz, and inside that is... Uh, of course, there's a two phase windings on it uh, and generated by this uh, AC input power. And I use the capacitance to uh, phase shift it to generate the second phase. So anyway, this contraption below, uh, which I have uh, is to generate uh, for this two phase, uh, two phase winding of the, of, the, of the structure, which is actually really four windings on one side, one phase and two windings on the other side. And therefore generate a, rotating magnetic field, but this rotating magnetic field operates on the leakage of this transfer, not on the main flux. But nevertheless, you can put here the metal aluminum egg, what we did, believe it or not, at 60 hertz, it was not getting a signal speed of 3,600 RPM, but it's getting around 18, 1,800 RPM. I mean, it's like a huge power. So I had actually uh, to put something over it. So you can watch, point is, you can watch my demonstration, uh, uh, one of these uh, on my YouTube channel. And in fact, I made also a very simple uh, demonstration of a 750 horsepower motor, where I pulled out uh, this, you see here, this is a big uh, uh, squirrel cage rotor, which is short in terms, uh, uh, and uh, uh, which served as an induction motor uh, rotor. But the point is, when you pull out this uh, rotor, your inductance becomes, uh, you know, 100 times smaller. Uh, but that's why I had to make this uh, with a box, which reduces 110 volts uh, two phase to, to the 10 volts two phase, which means uh, 10 times square, 100 times lower, lower uh, uh, force. But that's okay uh, because uh, uh, that way make sure that uh, if I put a coke can, which is really an uh, example of this short terms of secondary, 
then you still rotate at the at the synchronous speed, but it will not burn the winding because I reduced uh, 100 times uh, the current in a primary, okay, or 10 times, whatever. So anyway, you can look at that. That's a point uh, of a demonstration of a Tesla using a, a toroidal core, big toroidal core, and uh, and his, his famous experiment of rotating uh, uh, magne rotating magnetic field, uh, rotating. Uh, this uh, aluminum leg. Okay, so let's go, go further. And the point I'm making is in just uh, 10 years, 11 from 1882 uh, uh, till uh, 1893, the first uh, system of electrical distribution was set up. And really, uh, interesting point is, um, which I think is, uh, uh, so they basically, in 10 years, he already demonstrated, and this what in Chicago fair, there was 1895, the big uh, fair, and there was decision made where they're going to use to uh, uh, have all this uh, lighting done uh, using the uh, Edison DC or uh, alternate current, and decision was made, uh, alternate current was much better, and therefore uh, the Tesla and Westinghouse got uh, Construct so they lighted 1895 the uh, fair. Now, yeah, the World Fair in Chicago was the first a big demonstration of a Tesla polyphase system, and he actually used it to this uh, World Fair has a huge uh, lighting, and then a transformer of his, uh, of course, there was a two phase transformer or a three phase transformer. In fact, three phase uh, was used uh, to provide uh, uh, lighting for a lamp. So he, he demonstrated in a big way how his three-phase uh, power can, uh, uh, how do say, light up the, the world. Now, talking about this, let me just mention one other thing. You know what we're doing nowadays with the lighting? There's a beautiful, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous invention made by uh, three Japanese uh, 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 two professors and one engineer, uh, they got a Nobel Prize for inverting uh, uh, gallium nitride uh, LED, which is capable of doing what, uh, you know, regular silicon uh, was able to do it. Uh, uh, now for red light and uh, green light, but the problem was how to make a blue light. And this guy who was a, uh, in, the, uh, in uh, J Japan, he said, oh, I'll do gallium nitride uh, instead of silicon and uh, and do the blue light. He was successful in that. But what, you know, what is the problem with the, uh, and then of course you have a blue light, then you have a green, blue and red. And what do you get? You have white light, beautiful. But what's the problem? How to drive that, uh, uh, that uh, lamp, uh, LED, uh, blue LED. You have a hundred watt converter, uh, or which is uh, this big, and you are driving it uh, uh, the little thing, which uh, which is uh, uh, very efficient, and uh, and but now the converter is ten times bigger than it should be, ten times more losses, which is hundred times more work. So that's why we have a problem with the with the, how to drive LEDs. And then, by the way, one of my recent invention that I'm uh, pointing out and so on is showing how we can make uh, the transformer and a converter which drives LEDs and uh, it is as small uh, and uh, as efficient as LEDs. Because what's a useful step? To drive LEDs, you need something 10 times bigger and times more lost than LED, right? Anyway, let's continue further. I think uh, whereas I have some other point to make further. Yeah, here, the point I'm making it you will hear in my course, uh, that was a 2021. Um, that's the last time that I did an uh, in-person uh, three days course at UC Irvine. And then since that time, I started doing this uh, online courses. And, and I made this uh, really demonstration of a kind of a, say it's about time we really retire back boost flyback and forward converter because forward converter has a half a good transformer, but AC transformer, but his output inductor, which is again, uh, 
limiting the current and the power they can deliver to that. So it becomes a, um, you know, a limitation for whole power electronics. So how are we going to make a, a electric drive for our cars and put the 100 kilowatt charger inside the, and the electric car, which is no bigger than induction motor, which is being driven there, uh, if uh, you use the present technology. So what they do, present technology has a, 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 a driver to the EV car is a, a big as a car itself, and it's sitting uh, 300 miles away uh, at some place, and uh, it's cost hundred thousand dollars or more uh, because we don't know how to build a how you say, how to build a charger as small as an induction motor, which is in, inside that uh, has 100 kilowatt, uh, 150 kilowatt uh, uh, AC motor. And then you have a, even a drive is uh, on the size of the, of the motor, but the charger is uh, 10 times bigger, 10 times more, uh, more expensive and 10 well, times it, more losses. You know, Nobel uh, prizes are... Okay, you know, so I think uh, now we have to, what I want to do is, okay, here. Switches, semiconductor switches, we can switch very fast. Uh, we can, we have putting, putting the AC system in place. First time we can actually, for the first time consider, can we actually, take advantage of high frequency, but not what the people at Tesla and Friday thought, maybe we should generate generator, which you, and Tesla was able to do it, to make a 400 Hertz voltage. In fact, on a shipboard is used, uh, 400 Hertz uh, alternate current is used and voltage is used to reduce dramatically 10 times size of generators and size of the motor because they need to be there on both where the, every pound cost. And of course, now we have electrical car, which don't use even uh, 400 Hertz. They only use 1.6 kilohertz, believe it or not. Frequency the more, and only increase from 60 Hertz to 1.6 kilohertz. Yet we are switching now at megahertz, and yet we are not getting a return. Uh, uh, still, we are not, if you say now we are 60 kilohertz switching, compared to 60 Hertz, that's a thousand times higher frequency. And you would think, okay, we could make the sizes of magnetics, the sizes of uh, transformers, thousand times more, not so. And we're doing something wrong. And there is a better way around the corner that we should be able to take advantage to indeed make a much smaller size of magnetics and make a not alternating but high voltage dc transmission line and now hopefully by the end have a chance to a little bit uh, talk about that as well okay. okay time to switch to my other uh, presentation which was uh how to say uh here uh let's look at uh let's look at my my other presentation, which is uh, here, which is also, by the way, this is what I added. This is a more complete presentation uh, of uh, which we, you can see it now. This is a basic uh, review of what I just told you. By the way, did anybody uh, have these four volume books? Yes or no? Who has uh, purchased these four volume books? No? 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 Well, you're missing. I published this uh, 
1,200 pages with my research group at Caltech and Professor Middlebrook, who was my mentor at the time. And afterward, we were working together. And uh, volume one is uh, now uh, uh, the what used to be volume two paperback edition. Now it's volume one. And it was uh, later, uh, then volume two is uh, published uh, papers between uh, 81 to 83. So by 2000, uh, 19, 19, 1983, which is, uh, you know, I finished PhD at Caltech from 74 to 76. So five, six, seven years after my uh, thesis, then uh, volume four is my PhD thesis, which is a basis for all of this, which uh, I followed after that. And uh, volume three is a bunch of the practical design articles and uh, applications and so on. So it's 1,200 pages. I published it as a, as a four volume uh, books on Amazon and uh, Amazon, you know, sell them $100 a piece. I tried them to sell them as a package, but they wouldn't do it. Uh, because of that, I said, okay, you can now buy uh, directly from my website, teslaco.com, and you order it, and I'll send all four of you at a much uh, lower price than uh, when you order it from Tesla or then through uh, then Amazon, because they wouldn't uh, agree to say, send it as a package. Okay, that's a, a little uh, description of how I was ahead. Now, what, what is this? Uh, Old spell and the storm in Texas, because some would think that's why I engineered that, so we can show how the electrical power distribution throughout the world is important, and we cannot live without it. Okay, and uh, energy for nuclear power plants. Tribute to uh, Nikola Tesla that in uh, just spent, just in this lecture and Balvani and Volta actually okay, and he found out yeah. Day, who was then already at the uh, to anything, but using it, and he made a here which resolved what's happening. I, I thought you have positive. Uh, it... Sorry, it looks like we are we uh, clicked on the wrong thing, clicked on this one instead of that one. Sorry, yeah. Sorry for uh, this. This is uh, 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 let's uh, let's start the show and then see how the people will you know fix it or along the way make it uh, happen. Okay, so let me uh, tell you also how I want to conduct this because there are so many people. I would like to uh, make a presentation with a minimal interruption, uh, and uh, you can use the chat to ask the question. Some people are already doing that, you know. Uh, and uh, one one fellow said his cam is broken. The other, so you can use the chat to ask the question, so you are not interaction. Hopefully, by that time you'll figure out how to make sure that your video works and your audio works on your computer. If your computer works, I suggest one thing: if you all have you all have a cell phone, connect, get connected on this meeting on a cell phone, because every cell phone now has audio and video which works automatically. Okay, so that's the point. Speaker view, and when I'm in a speaker view, uh, you can see me talking, and then whoever actually uh, gets to interact and talk, he will also show on a, a speaker. So I uh, froze a picture for a second. This is a okay. Uh, let me to speed up uh, because you're going to get a copy of this uh, embedded in my uh, presentation. At this time, there is also another experiment which is available on YouTube uh, channel. I don't know where I picked it up, but I embedded it in my presentation. And what it is, it is a recreation of the famous uh, experiment that Erstad, who was a prof Danish professor uh, in Denmark, who made a lecture in 1821 when everybody was trying to establish connection with electricity and magnetism. And I'll just tell you briefly, which is already said in this one, uh, what he did is uh, he made a lecture in front of the audience, and you can see this. Uh, this here is uh, the battery. The battery which generates this DC current, DC battery which generates DC current in this red wire. And you see what happens there. You know, 
he put the magnetic needle next to this uh, DC current carrying wire to establish can the DC current uh, generate, uh, let's say, DC magnetic field and affect magnetic needle. And in his presentation, uh, he was not successful. He was actually uh, trying to demonstrate that it doesn't have connection, that the DC current cannot move magnetic needle. And in fact, it didn't until what? Until some guy, smart guy in the audience, or, or very often audience is smarter than a lecturer, right? <laughs> you know, so, so what happened is uh, in a break, uh, one guy from the audience say, "Hey, why don't you make this current in reverse? You know, just uh, just put uh, below the magnetic needle, uh, put the current to go instead of this way, go in opposite direction." And what happened? Magnetic needle jumped all over the place. Why? Because magnetic needle responds to magnetic poles of, of uh, Earth. North South Pole. That's how the navigation was done with the magnet needle to tell whether you're moving north or south and so on. And the reason why the first time it worked didn't work because this uh, force that generated with this current in that direction was generating in the same direction as a magnetic force. So it, it actually very little changed. So there was uh, there was no interaction. But the moment you change the current, then it's going in a different direction. Then there was a big inclination. There was a huge, huge uh, uh, surprise in the whole world, and that started uh, uh, Alessandro. Well, uh, you know, that started uh, Ampere to develop uh, Ampere circuit law to describe what kind of forces uh, made on this uh, needle and so on, because it was constant current generating a certain force, and then it depends on how far it is from a current because. Further away, there will be less force. Okay, so establish connection, and and then for next ten years, uh, from twenty one to thirty one until Faraday invented uh, uh, low electromagnetic induction, everybody was trying to do that to conduct the DC current and generate uh, uh, how you say force on uh, on a magnetic needle, and then they said opposite. If I get a magnetic force by permanent magnet, oh, I should be able to use permanent magnet and generate a DC current. So you don't have to use Walter battery, we can generate a generator. This is generator from magnetic uh, uh, permanent magnet. Of course, it doesn't work because who was uh, actually who uh, proved? Picked that, up uh, from the uh, internet, uh, uh, short video, on, like, uh, let me see how, how do I, I want to uh, jumpstart this, but uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't let me. Uh, on. Showing the very important experiment, which was done way back in 200 years ago, actually, uh, to be exact, wow, to this 201 is years. And uh, he made an experiment trying to prove. Wait a minute. Can I? That electricity and magnetism <laughs> the, the problem are not that, connected. I, I realize now the problem is so when, what he was when I have this embedded uh, other uh, video, I cannot uh, uh, run over it. You know, it, it has to how you say uh, do this uh, trying to prove and get an actual demonstration. Well, I don't know because at that time. Ten years prior to that, as uh, 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 Galvani discovered this, you know, live electricity by cutting the probe, oh, and then later Look, the Volta yeah. figured out how to make out of that. Uh, we're talking about Faraday, okay. And I'm saying found, that Faraday. I found a way how to jump. Yeah. Okay. So this is a this is a, a later part of the go to demonstration. Eighteen twenty one. Uh, when he heard in 1820, when he heard that at Faraday experiment, everybody tried to do the opposite. Well, uh, you know, it makes sense, right? You have a constant current going and affecting magnetic needle. And then the thought was, can we do reverse and put a magnetic field? And there was at that time available permanent magnet. You can get uh, magnetic material, which is a permanent magnet. 
and you use a permanent magnet and say, okay, I'll put a now permanent magnet around the wire and I try to get a generated DC current. Well, the only problem is it doesn't work. Even though the Faraday uh, spent from 1821 to uh, 1831 trying to prove just that. And what has happened, as you see here, he concocted this experiment He's trying to repeat exactly that. He put a battery because that was the only source of the power at that time. So, so he put a battery uh, and put a switch in it. And with the idea, he'll turn on the switch and we'll get uh, now uh, on this, what it looks like. It looks like and feels like a transformer, except it doesn't work like a transformer. <laughs> you know. And I explain in a second. And uh, the system he had is he had a, at that time very sensitive galvanometer which could me measure milliamps of the current. And then when you would turn a switch on a primary, this whole uh, gadget, and you can see it in a uh, display, the original transformer is a huge toroid. And he put a, a one winding on one side on, the, on, on that room and he, in a, he put this uh, uh, battery source of the power and the switch in one room and then uh, the toroid and galvanometer measuring in the other room. And he would initially spend a futile attempt trying to turn on the DC power and get a DC power on the output of his transformer, right? But it didn't happen. It, uh, why? Because he would come and turn a switch on in one room where this concoction was on the left-hand side on a practice is only one room, go to another room and wouldn't see anything until one day, I guess his assistant was again, uh, how you say, by a mistake, came early. So he told the assistant, turn the switch on and he was working in his room. And guess what? Just during that instance, when you turn the switch on, there was a declination of a, a recorded a current, transient current in a galvanometer, right? And then, uh, okay, uh, so as you turn the switch off, again, there is declination in other direction. So that's where he discovered the law of uh, electromagnetic induction. And the people start seeing they can make an electromagnet if you put a, a magnetic core, and uh, which dramatically increases uh, the flux in the core and force, then with a small current, you can pull out uh, big, uh, you know, attract the steel and move it from one place to another. But the point, they were all stuck at that time that you need a change of the current. And he introduced his Faraday law, but it was waited until later in 1860 uh, something, uh, 67 uh, is when uh, Faraday died. But before Faraday died, Maxwell uh, came and explain why it is impossible. And of course, he came along the way with a Maxwell equation, why it is impossible that a constant current uh, uh, operate in this uh, gadget. It is only a require, it can only operate in, the, in this transient mode. And of course, what happened in the meantime, I think there are some people who realized, well, if that is the case, they uh, tried to make a, I would say transformer uh, to operate not with a battery, but operate with the alternating generator, single phase generator. And then it turns out if you put instead of a galvanometer, we put a light bulb, light bulb will uh, shine because it, then Tesla proved his in 1882 that it's just the opposite. One thing I wonder, and that's uh, unfortunately <laughs> with, the, with the whole world, you know. Wonder, I wonder if uh, Faraday and Tesla were uh, alive when in Faraday and Maxwell were alive when Tesla did that. I'm sure they will give a sum up and say this is the greatest invention since sliced bread. Unfortunately, after they died, there was nobody of that statue to really back that up. And then there was a big war of current, whether you should use a DC for a transmission or a 
AC. And the funny thing is, uh, nowadays, we have all the tools in the power electronics to make it happen, to make a DC high voltage transmission, but uh, not the way they're doing it now, but uh, using it as a high voltage transmission, because right now what they do is they are still stuck with the alternating current and they use the alternating current at high voltage to convert it to high voltage DC and use a high voltage DC cable because that's you can put under water and connect one island to another island in, in British islands. And then on the other end in the island and convert it back from DC to AC. But that's not a point. Now we can make a, a use of this beautiful device transformer, especially uh, even for a single phase, we can make a DC to DC conversion high voltage, which is initially uh, using the source of power, not uh, like Niagara power plant with the uh, converting the mechanical power with the generator, 60 per generators in, a, in a, um, AC okay. power, but use the sunlight, which comes naturally to the DC and use a converter to transfer it uh, with the isolation to transfer it to very high voltage from the okay. primary. I'm now you are jumping, going to. Uh, I'm now you, jumping uh, another 20 minutes. Uh, and you can uh, review all this uh, eventually uh, because uh, it's on uh, on this link, on the same link. But uh, I just uh, jumped to AC transformer, uh, 60 Hertz in 1882, where he basically made a single phase primary and driving the, the battery. And, uh, and AC voltage and AC current at 60 Hertz. And... Uh, 200 volts in US, 110 uh, in Europe, 110 in, in Europe, and so on. Uh, but one thing I want to make sure, what we people at this time, Tesla need a mechanical power to transfer to electrical power by inventing his three-phase generator and putting in a Niagara Falls. He was transferring the mechanical, huge mechanical power, which is on a megawatts level from a Niagara Falls to generate uh, with his three phase gen uh, generator power. And in fact, they would actually, uh, I would say during the day, they would let uh, uh, Niagara Falls show its beauty for visitors, but at night they would uh, channel all the uh, power, all the, all the, I say, waterfalls through tubes to drive his uh, three-phase generator. So there will be no vi uh, thing to visit uh, and see the waterfalls at night because that converting uh, power to uh, Niagara Falls, mechanical power of water to electricity. And then where was the first time he used his high voltage transmission line? It was used uh, from Niagara Falls to the nearby Buffalo. They had a big electric, uh, a uh, big plan to uh, uh, use electrolysis to generate, uh, I'll say, uh, to extract aluminum from bauxite, from this uh, ore. And this requires a uh, very uh, low voltage, but a huge current. But that was not possible to create uh, and, and transmit 42 miles away to Buffalo. So they used the first high voltage transmission to do that. And that is a mechanical power, understand? Mechanical power converted to electrical power. And then, uh, then he used high voltage transmission lines to transmit it to the long distances and then transformer backwards, three phase transformer backwards to transmit it to the regular low voltage where you can drive the motors and so on. But what's the difference between then and now? We have solar power and solar power is a source. We don't need mechanical energy to transfer and generate uh, electrical power. We can have solar power, but solar power is DC, you understand? And because it's DC, uh, then the, there is uh, only one remaining problem. How do you make efficient DC to DC high voltage conversion? How do you uh, generate from uh, three volts, uh, two to three volt solar cells and put them in, in uh, 
low voltage high current in parallel to generate low voltage high current source and uh, then use a really beautiful transformer at 20 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz transmitted to first 400 volts uh, DC. But once you get 400 volt DC, use the same system to convert 400 volt DC to 4,000 volts, okay? And proportional low current. But once you have that, what is the next step? You can you can have a, a 10, 10 secondary turns and uh, a stack that's a voltage of 4,000 volts 10 times, you get 40,000 volts, right? And what do you have on a primary? You still have 400 volt devices, you know, right? And 400 volt, 400 volt and uh, appropriate higher current, uh, single uh, primary, and you have a power on uh, 4,000, 40,000 volts on a secondary. Now you can have ability to use a generation of the DC power directly from a source of solar cells. You don't need mechanical power. But once you have that high voltage DC, you use uh, this DC to DC converter backwards to go from 40,000 volts down to 400 volts and distribute 400 volts DC. The only thing which is missing is that thing, and I still didn't come up with that. I think that requires, requires it has a nice AC voltage source, uh, which is solar cells, DC voltage source, solar cell, but it's missing the DC, nice direct, uh, DC uh, motor, right? Because DC motor exists, but it is really a uh, con concoction because uh, it has a, mechanically it's very bad because it has a, how you say, rectifiers and uh, and uh, in uh, commutation and all that stuff, which uh, Tesla noticed was bad. So it'd be nice if someone, and I give you that, tried right, to invent some uh, direct conversion of DC voltage, high voltage to, uh, you know, 40,000 volts to, 400 volts and then have a 400 volts motor, but to be more like a, like a real uh, like Tesla induction motor, which a Tesla induction motor requires the uh, AC, uh, three phase AC windings and to operate. So anyway, but in any case, uh, this is a, where the future is because the advantage of this uh, higher, let's say, advantage of the solar cells we don't need, as I described, we don't need for that ideal DC, DC transformer. We don't need, uh, I say, the uh, energy storage. It's not stored. Give you an idea. Could that be applied? If you provide it, you have that kind of ideal transformer. You have a transformer which is driven by DC voltage on input and sources DC current clear this current, and then have a galvanically isolated transformer, which has no storage in the leakage inductance, has a, no problems, uh, has a uh, proportionally reduced, no switching losses on a primary and secondary, uh, zero voltage switching on primary, zero current saturation on secondary, and therefore you have a very high uh, voltage step up uh, converter, which doesn't store energy. Now, what about feeding that? Well, give you an example. You know, you heard for the Trans-Siberian uh, uh, Railroad, it goes from St. Petersburg on the East Coast, on a, on a uh, West, West Coast or, or, or in Russia, and they have a train which goes two or three days uh, all the way to Kamchatka, which is uh, some, I don't know, 10,000 miles or so. And uh, is there a train there? So if you have a train there and there are tracks, so all you need to do is put between the tracks, uh, dig a one meter hole, uh, one meter uh, deep and put your DC transmission cable, which will be having this uh, positive DC, negative DC and neutral and buried in, in uh, between, uh, how I say, the, between the tracks. And of course, every 100 miles, what do you do? You put a, a solar uh, panel. And the solar panel provides the DC low voltage power. And then with this uh, transmission line is converted to high voltage. And of course, uh, if you convert it to 400 volts first, 
you can use 400 volts to drain the train to drain the train itself without uh, without uh, how do you say diesel or other things uh, driving the train but at the same time you feed the power every hundred miles into this transmission line which is 40,000 volts so how good is that well terrific as the sun goes around you're creating the uh, power they needed so you're pumping the DC power at a high voltage all along as the sun moves around. How good is that? Well, that's the future. That's what is actually uh, what I'm working now and what is possible. And hopefully, in, uh, if you stick with me for a few years, you'll get to uh, learn about it. Now, let me get back to the course and what we are expecting next. I already introduced you. You will get all this. Uh, it looks like more like it is like two hours uh, uh, of my presentation so far. And um, you'll get a, a copy of this uh, link to this so you can uh, look at it and read it at ease. I will, in the meantime, send you some more information which should be uploaded on, uh, on my um, Academy 23 folder. Uh, and hopefully this will give us enough time to, as I alluded to, um, essentially promote uh, that my new course, which will be based on a, um, Academy, uh, Power Electronics Academy posted on uh, Facebook and uh, using, having everybody sign up on uh, WhatsApp and make, make, I will actually have everybody who was in my past online courses and my past offline courses, which are in-house courses to join and make continuous education. I do plan to use at least once a year to make uh, this kind of a lecture, which I, last time I gave a six, uh, six uh, weeks lecture. This time I will be planning uh, eight weeks lectures uh, with everybody connected uh, uh, on WhatsApp. And then uh, I have lots of uh, things now to upload additional material on my Academy 23. And uh, between now and I hope within a one month or, or round, I'll keep you updated. I'll get through the current, uh, you know, problem with the, this uh, as I'm establishing new uh, um, from my, my new bank uh, and their, uh, I would say, payment service, uh, not to get this uh, fraud uh, and hacking will happen uh, so far. And I will re revitalize my. Uh, both on my websites and then establish a presence on Facebook. So just uh, be uh, uh, looking into the future and hopefully um, maybe some of you might uh, be interesting to join in my uh, journey to uh, really create uh, future power electronics, but not in the 22nd century, but really now because the time is available right, right now because we have all components to do it, but we didn't have a right system to actually implement this high voltage DC generation and transmission. We do have an infinite source of energy in our solar cells, but uh, we don't, and way, way can we implement it in a grand scale, like I mentioned one, of course we could do also the cable underneath the Atlantic and instead of transferring the signals, we could have a transferring the, the power and uh, and therefore not being uh, stuck with his uh, high voltage transmission line, which are really uh, sore because, uh, you know, or danger to, you know, uh, when we have all these hurricanes, which is just happening in the ta ta uh, Hawaii, this whole uh, Hawaii disaster was, uh, they, they're still hiding it, but I think at this present, uh, I think there is probably several thousand people who have burned to death. And you know why? <laughs> because the fire was uh, generated because of a high voltage transmission line. When they break due to the wind and everything else, then they cause the short and the short causes the fire. And the fire overnight, uh, and, and they had a warning system in Hawaii, which was intended not for a fire because they consider that a minor problem. They were designed and have a fantastic uh, alarm system all over the place if there is a pending tsunami. 
So if some people were, uh, if there's a big waves coming, so they they had the sirens and everything else to warn the people that uh, there is a tsunami. And then the guy who was in charge of that, he decided not to use it to alarm the fire. When the fire started in the mountains uh, there and then moved uh, fast, you know, and obliterated the whole, you know, initially there were 100 people who had died, but only five, five of them had been, uh, had been uh, how say, confirmed uh, who they are uh, because most of them burned completely to death. What's left of their teeth, you know? And, and now they're, they're talking about 1,000, 2,000 people uh, which died with no, uh, nothing left of them, you know? And why? Because this guy was smart enough and instead of to turning that alarm for a fire as well, he said, oh, he was afraid if he turned it on, people will run into mountains. What a stupid thing. Why would they run into a mountain when the fire originated? You know what I'm saying? Because he thought a, a tsunami will say, run away from a beach and then go to mountains. Hey, people are seeing a fire, but they have to be woken in the morning when they're sleeping, you know? So people are stupid, right? Okay, that's the point, all right. And unfortunately, our field uh, is uh, uh, going backwards as far as I'm concerned in the last 20 to 30 years with the the zillion publications, uh, which are just cluttering the whole field with a bunch of nonsense. Okay, so hopefully you'll start with me and you will actually uh, carry the words to your colleagues and friends to uh, join as soon as I get my website going back and uh, my, uh, uh, how do I say, registration to the courses and then uh, we'll start this course in uh, as, as fast as I can fix all of this happening and uh, and expect a lot of uh, uh, learning, and uh, and you can uh, really learn it. I'm glad whoever didn't get so far, and I complained to me if you didn't get uh, access to the Academy 23, I'll send you immediately a, con a connection. So we'll go from there. Okay. So. Um, sorry, can I just ask a question? What uh, is that? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. So the course isn't starting yet. It's uh, postponed. Oh, this is. This no, the, as I said, I have uh, still problems to re uh, because uh, they hacked my website and they have my registration and so on. So I'm working uh, around the clock to establish that as soon as possible. I hope a couple of weeks. And in this uh, transition period, I want to make sure that everybody has access to Academy 23 and uh, go look at the, some of the uh, stuff they're going to upload there, including this presentation. Go to uh, my uh, YouTube, because you have already access to these two lectures. And once you go to YouTube, you'll have access to the bunch of other 50 or so lectures that I did make from uh, uh, previous two online courses and as well uh, lectures that I made from uh, previous uh, in-place, in-person courses at the UC Irvine. So there's a lot of material to learn and uh, go for it. And, uh, and I will update you as soon as possible. I might in the next uh, uh, couple of uh, weeks and so on, uh, invite you for another, I would call a presentation, uh, which I will make it like a, like a free website to invite your colleague to uh, do some critical uh, discussion, for example, explain why uh, the present power electronics is uh, on a wrong track because of this, uh, what I call it, fake conductors and how we should go and uh, forget about uh, uh, what the present uh, switching converters are and accept for pointing what's bad with them. And then how do we go and avoid uh, the uh, uh, current situation that most people are totally uneducated in magnetics, don't understand magnetics and they propagate their complete misunderstanding of it. And then hopefully when you go through this whole course of uh, which we now instead of three uh, six weeks it'll be eight weeks uh, then uh, then uh, you'll be much better off and then uh, then you will join this um, what I call a revolution which is about to take place so thanks very much uh, for attending and so on and uh, I will after this I will send you links to this uh, presentation I skip a bunch of the part because it's too long so we can have a here and I have here on a chat. I can include what's on the chat. No. 
Is that what it, what it is? Okay. No, it's a, I'm just trying to see if I can get this. You're going to have a huge inductance when you have this core. And okay. a huge inductance will say that the current... Okay. okay. Anyway. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, I think today we have also been on a learning curve how to eliminate uh, the unwanted guys who are you know, just uh, evil uh, in what they're doing. And, uh, and you see here on my website, now I learned how uh, the modern, uh, uh, how I say, uh, presentation like a YouTube and so on that I have, it is now not only giving you the, how I say, text of what I'm saying, uh, translate the uh, title, uh, anything of what I'm talking is translated into text, you can watch and listen. Uh, but also it has this uh, here, you see key moments. So I was able to jump and and for you, if you want to review, you can uh, jump from one thing to another, you know, uh, electromagnetic induction, Maxwell equations, uh, uh, Faraday's law, charge balance and so on. Okay, so at least you now learned how to navigate. I learned how to uh, essentially get some of the intruders who are just uh, wild hexters, you know, uh, to get rid of them, uh, which is important to me because then uh, I think I can avoid what I did before. It will take half an hour or one hour when I get 40 people or 50 or 100 people that each one uh, joins and I had, and usually people don't come on time. So it's constantly interrupting my presentation to, uh, um, uh, except another uh, guy who uh, who is coming on. This way, we keep it that way. If you have this uh, link that you have over internet, you can join. If you're late, you can join. Uh, you can join with audio or video and whatever. And then uh, I have now ability to, when we uh, find out where the source of problem is, we can not only uh, mute him, but we can actually uh, drop him out of the presentation. Okay. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, I'll uh, expect to see soon from me this uh, uh, link to the presentation. You are welcome to join my YouTube because you already have access to these two YouTube presentation. You will see a lot of lectures on uh, what I did in uh, online uh, to my previous two online courses as well as previous in-person courses. So have a great day, and uh, I'm sorry for this uh, delay, but uh, I live in a in a present situation like you do, where there are a lot of, uh, how I say, bad things happening, and uh, and even uh, institutions like IEEE are not educating people, but are they just uh, uh, trying to maximize the profit and minimize the uh, uh, output, and they actually give a voice to everybody who has nothing to say, and then those few who are have something to uh, say, they uh, try to how to say, mute their voice, if you will, because because I'm there and and I'm considered now the threat because when I put my on I, IEEE um, Power Electronic Society, I put a mention that uh, that I'll do this course and which time and so on, and they uh, blocked me. You, you can't believe it in that uh, I'm a not only a fellow member of IEEE but a lifetime member, and this society of what has the uh, I don't know, 36,000 or more uh, uh, on Power Electronics uh, Society uh, LinkedIn. And they, I'm the only one who is blocked from uh, from that. They just cancel me from uh, from um, being able to look at anything there. So it's uh, we live in a new world that uh, that is uh, dictated by profit and by uh, and who cares about education? In my mind, you know. Uh, IEEE has a half a million members worldwide, but uh, they are really uh, not deserving their non-profit st status because they're just, uh, um, how do I say, uh, 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 making this field uh, all of a self-advertising and uh, and uh, making a huge profit and having uh, 40, 60 conferences per year all over the world, uh, charging the big fees and so on and uh, really contaminating the world rather than providing a clear education. Okay, that's my my personal feeling. And hopefully when you uh, 
uh, stay with my courses uh, and soon they will learn that that's uh, really the case. Okay, so now I will uh, stop sharing. Okay, thanks a million guys. And hope Thank to you. see you on, uh, keep you updated with this update uh, and see you uh, soon on my, I will try to get my two recent website uh, that I made free uh, website presentations. I will also send you uh, this, uh, usually when I have a website presentation, I send you material to study before that. So, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna upload this to Academy 23, this website so you can study and then we can arrange for whatever date uh, between now and next uh, couple of weeks to make this uh, critical uh, presentation on a subject that uh, that uh, that are critically important in this field. And uh, and uh, hopefully uh, then we have a more detailed presentation for uh, about 120 hours uh, lectures for uh, two two months uh, spread five days a week, two hours plus one hour question and answer, and um, and uh, spread the word that yes, I'm live and kicking and uh, uh, really excited to uh, uh, introduce you to this uh, technology now and not, you don't have to wait <laughs> to 22nd century uh, to take that, to see that happening. So spread the word around, uh, look, uh, look at uh, what I'm posting, and then uh, we'll see you soon. So again, I think we learned today how to get rid of the bad guys. <laughs> so at least that was very useful. Thanks for your help and uh, assistance to find those. And uh, and uh, I'm, uh, as I said, never been more excited than, uh, than uh, transferring uh, for what I had in 50 years of this field uh, to you guys and any new entries in this field. So they find, find out that's probably one of the most exciting field in electrical engineering to be now, because we are at the verge of, uh, you know, after 200 years from 1821, when, when we electromagnetic started, we now can put it to use because lucky we, we live in this earth, which, which <laughs> generates all this, uh, elect, how to say, suns and, and doesn't burn uh, the earth, you know, and it's the only one, you know, I had to just to conclude, you know, if you, you will see it and I can actually send you, I didn't do that, but I'll send you now. Actually, I'm proud I had um, work with this NASA, uh, not only the, my research, uh, uh, Caltech PhD was all supported two years with the NASA. Then when I made my uh, uh, company, uh, the NASA supported uh, from 2007 to 2014 work with the Honeywell and we build the power supplies, uh, hybrid power supplies uh, for a bunch of them for uh, uh, for Iran spacecraft. And then uh, in uh, 2014, they made a trial run which circled twice around Earth and uh, flashed down to test the system, but it required much more power to put it out of the uh, uh, Earth gravitation. So September this year, I had the pleasure to see that uh, finally this around spacecraft with the latest Delta, uh, not Delta rocket, which were latest before, but now this uh, latest uh, uh, powerful uh, rocket was able to <laughs> get out of the uh, Earth gravitation. And for the first time, uh, this around spacecraft went and circled in the moon on its own, on the moon's uh, power, you know, basically on moon's gravitation force. And then they had uh, still some rockets to take them back from uh, outside of the uh, weak uh, gravitation of the moon and go back to earth. And you won't believe it. What kind of that effort is you're talking about that this little uh, Apollo, Apollo, like Apollo 11, which was uh, taking three astronauts, this, this new one is twice the size and has four astronauts. They mentioned it possibly six, but actually using four. And four astronauts in it, and that is a 5% or 2% of the whole damn thing. Everything else is thrown away on the way up and on the way down. You know, the uh, big rockets with the big uh, hydrogen fuel tanks and then get, getting out, and then it has solar panels. 
which are displ di displayed, and they need 120 volts to convert it to three volts, five volts, eight volts, whatever, to drive all electronics inside. So that's where those are my converters were used there. And guess what is it? They throw the 95% of the stuff, but my, my converters go in the next year, uh, the same, uh, but uh, next year they will actually do the same thing, but repeat it with the four astronauts on board in 2024. And then by 2028 or maybe uh, earlier, the, the same system will go to Mars and land on Mars. So we are talking uh, a lot of things. I I hope I, I will convince NASA that some of my latest technology can do much more power and much more of space and much more efficiently so they can put the new systems and uh, going to Mars rather than living with, uh, you know, outdated system that is currently uh, capable of much less power and uh, much lower efficiency. Okay. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, and uh, uh, as I said, uh, usually I was my, again, my in-house presentation, you serve in three or four days at the end of uh, three days, I will say, if you liked my course, tell a friend. And if you didn't, just keep quiet, okay? Thank you very much. Professor Chuk, okay. uh, question here. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I don't have access to the Academy 23 folder. Um, it's probably because the emails are going to our company secretary. But the question I have is, do you have the simulations on the Academy 23 folder? Yes, I do. I have simulation uh, both of my power, uh, my uh, what I call the original Chuk Bak 2, and it was the wrong name. It was uh, better to be called Power uh, uh, PWM uh, Resonant Converter, even though that sounds like a, like a misnomer, but it is actually using PWM control it and, uh, and uh, resonance. So it has all advantages of resonance and all that. And uh, actually, I uh, have the simulation of a single converter, which has a tremendous transient response, and then two converters in a parallel, phase shifted by 90 degrees, generate uh, that the current on the output is essentially uh, ripple reduced uh, from all ripple down to 5%. So you can have a, a little capacitance on the output. And the main thing I'm actually now working uh, to look for some companies who can give me special chip because what I believe now is, uh, you know, this converter is operating open loop. There is no feedback. No, you don't want to have a feedback have stability problem. There is no problem with the uh, mode of operation because it doesn't change. Uh, uh, this continuous continuous conduction mode always operate the same uh, continuous conduction mode. So I can, if it's ninety nine percent efficient, I can operate it open loop, which is great because any uh, closed loop causes what stability problem and uh, bandwidth, uh, killing the bandwidth. And uh, killing the bandwidth 10, 20 times makes uh, uh, 10, 10 to 20 times smaller response to fast transient. So basically you're getting everything done and then uh, and uh, you have a duty ratio which changes a little from z uh, zero to 0 0.5 and uh, you can change it and have at the same time, uh, I say, feed forward to get instantaneous change of uh, duty ratio to adjust for the input voltage automatically in a single cycle, then have a resonant current drawn on the output. So it has automatic uh, drawing the current in the next cycle of two. So, and of course, uh, the, what is that, what they are doing now? You know, they're doing, uh, I would say, 12 buck converters in parallel and so on, the whole industry. And I am right now having a project which is also taking my time with uh, Meta Facebook uh, that, uh, that I'm developing new kind of uh, power supplies for data centers, which will be uh, much more efficient and, and have all these advantages that I mentioned. But industry is a very, how I say, including a very, not only NASA, I thought was, a, uh, how I say, conservative, but industry is even more conservative. They would push this, uh, what I call this uh, uh, fake inductors and, uh, and fake converters like a back boost to fly back and uh, forward they'll push it for the next 50 years. And then universities will give lectures on that forever, you know, without trying to understand, let's move forward, let's do something better, you know what, not get stuck with what, what this is. But uh, Chris, do you have access to, uh, uh, you don't have access to Academy 23? So no, Dr. I... Chuk, I don't have either. 
I don't have any access to academic twenty three. So, okay, you two uh, send me the uh, request on my email that you had and say, hey, I didn't get it. I'll do it today, and then uh, I will send to everybody a link, including you and all those who didn't attend. And I'll send him. You guys are missing a lot of stuff <laughs> now. Since you <laughs> missed, it, I'll give you this uh, lecture for uh, you know YouTube uh, you know video a link so you can at your leisure look at it and learn about it. I'm all about uh, learning and about making sure that you get uh, your money's worth. You know that's why I have these courses that I when when I said, hey, if a company has a uh, three employees, okay, you pay the uh, one thousand two hundred for all three of them. That's four hundred per person. I can four hundred per person for my uh, hundred twenty lecture hours with the video and all that. I think that's a, that's a steal. And plus, you get a you get a you get to learn. The point is, I teach you in a two uh, in a two months what most university, including those that I have a bunch of my former PhDs who are professor, won't teach you for six years, five years, and you'll pay fifty thousand per year for it. So I'll teach you to be power electronic specialist in two months. And and then if you uh, connect with me on a WhatsApp, we'll continue this education, this uh, group uh, WhatsApp, uh, when I will propose every two months or, or every month to give a, a lecture that I respond to your question. So anyway. So what is your WhatsApp number to connect? What? Oh, what, 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 WhatsApp what? number. Listen, WhatsApp is uh, easy because if you have a cell phone, as I explained, a cell phone is not everything is cell phone centric. So if you have a cell phone, you just use a cell phone and and say uh, apply on your laptop, no laptop, apply on your cell phone uh, because it's cell phone centric. Apply to WhatsApp. Once you apply to WhatsApp, it will be automatically there, and uh, 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 then you you will be able to. Uh, be on a, uh, uh, on a, on a, how to say that? Yeah, so Dr. Chuk, I, I know I use WhatsApp, but I'm just curious, how do I connect with you on WhatsApp? I don't have your number or I don't know how, what is the Okay, group? okay, well, that's a good point. I will, uh, I will send you my uh, email, uh, my uh, uh, cell phone number, and then you say, I want to connect. Uh, you you actually can say you want to connect to me with either my email, but I think it's probably because of the cell phone, it'll be done with the cell phone. And uh, so you can use, if you uh, connect on a, on, a, on a WhatsApp, uh, I usually ask that the people put their profile of the picture so I can recognize them because I have so many 200 connections, so I can recognize whoever it is there without the name or without profile picture. So then put, because the cell phone number that you're connected with doesn't mean anything to me, right? So, and it's there is a way when you get on on, on that, you just put uh, connect to me as a as an email or connect to me using my cell phone number. My cell phone number is 949-887-2375. So 949-887-2375. Eight eight seven two three seven five, and you just say, hey, "I want to connect with you," and and then I reply, "Yes, great. Now we are connected. There is not much. Now, once you have that's you, so you know that once you have a connection on a, on a cell phone, then uh, it's a little bit more complicated to get connection. You don't want to have a web a web connection or WhatsApp. It's uh, because it's just uh, uh, not the same thing. You want to have connection on your local computer, and to do that. You, you they usually ask you if you are already have a cell phone uh, connection on WhatsApp, then they'll give you the way that you uh, look through the cell phone and you want to download uh, local, uh, how you say, WhatsApp uh, on uh, on a lo uh, your local computer because then you have the same option as you have on uh, on uh, uh, on a WhatsApp uh, cell phone because there I find it is. Fantastic because you get in anybody send me information, I get a notification, a sound notification uh, that you send me a chat, uh, some text. I look at the text, I respond on a text, and if you say, "Hey, let's go, or let's go on audio," you can you or I can initiate audio. We can go switch uh, to video. We can switch to that. You can put your status, and the status says, "Sorry, I'm having a 
tooth done this afternoon at the dentist, I won't be available. So you don't try to connect when uh, I'll tell you I'm not available during that time. So, so that's a fantastic way to communicate. And that's a, so much better than uh, all the crap that is right now. And, every, and most uh, billions of people are using that crap. You know, this, uh, uh, how do you say, Google Chrome, uh, Google access, uh, uh, Gmail, then access through the Outlook, uh, which is even worse, the, the Microsoft and so on. In the, and the text messages on a cell phone is just useless. 99% is just garbage, you know? But what can you do, you know? Everybody wants to sell things for free, right? <laughs> you know, so that's a, that's a uh, really reason behind it. But anyway, yeah, please join and send me. If you didn't get, I will immediately respond to you, especially if you uh, send me an email, because I still use email as a uh, Chuka Deslak as one way, and I will watch for it, even though I get a bunch of crap emails, but I'll see and uh, act on it. But if you're on a WhatsApp, then we are perfect. Then anything you need and everything is there, send me WhatsApp uh, text and say, hey, uh, can we, uh, and in fact, once we start after this new course is done, I will then set up probably once a month or once uh, uh, four or five weeks, I'll set up a, a question and answer a session. So you can, in the meantime, ask me all the questions on WhatsApp or email, and then uh, then we'll all get together in a group and then answer those questions and keep, keep communications. The whole point is, I think, uh, the whole power electronics is grossly underserved and is uh, underserved with the wrong information. And that's a problem. And I, even on my website, uh, teslaco.com, that I have, I have a special tab, which I called unlearn, you know, and I actually put it on my, uh, I actually put most of that also on my uh, uh, Academy 23, unlearn. You'll find out that you have to look through those, which I criticized in order to say, forget about this, this is all wrong because you have to first unlearn what is being taught in order to be able to learn uh, correctly. And that's usually harder. I usually like if you come to the course, you, you don't, I prefer you don't learn any, you don't have a, any knowledge and learn from a scratch uh, much faster and better than, than trying to unlearn what you have, you know, misfed for the last 10, 20 years through all these conferences and all this nonsense, okay? So, Anyway, thanks a million for your patience. I hope we have good un good understanding, and let's now go and work together and uh, help me out, and I'll help you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Dr. Shukla. Uh, uh, Professor Shukla, I have a question, actually. What do you say? Yeah. Cool. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, when will be the next class comments? We don't. Uh, as I said, as soon as I... Uh, try to, uh, my problem is right now that my uh, website is attacked and I'm working around the clock to get my website uh, working and my registration, uh, another website for registration, which is also fast. And I'm working uh, essentially to connect it with the, uh, uh, at the same time to connect it through uh, WhatsApp to connect with all the people who are signing up for a course. So that way I have a direct co communication with it free from all the crap, free from the, from the guys like you saw, you saw, you saw today who just uh, wants to make, can you imagine? I, I just can't imagine that any, only uh, human beings are doing that, you know? He got there and jumped on it and, and then started uh, blabbering and then uh, just to prevent me of talking clearly to you. And I had, uh, I'm paying a premium uh, connection to uh, YouTube. So I thought that because the problem will be if I didn't have premium connection, then I'm making a lecture and, and using this, my YouTube presentation and suddenly it is interrupted with the advertising. Okay, so I, I solved that problem. <laughs> now I don't allow any ad ad advertising to go on my YouTube. And of course, I encourage you go, since you have access now to my YouTube, this all premium, go there and look at the, uh, some hundred or so posting that I made over different videos. I guarantee you learn a lot, you know, and I actually also in YouTube, I very often when people comment on something, I reply to them. So that may be education, education as well. Right now, I'm also working on a, a making sure that all my YouTube is integrated into the uh, new, uh, let's say, uh, Meta Facebook, uh, a new Academy 23. So that means uh, 
you will be able to see all my lectures up directly on uh, on uh, Academy 23. So so you don't have to go jump to the YouTube and so on. And hopefully soon, I, I, I think there is some other benefits. I don't know what is the situation, but uh, seems like uh, Facebook is doing the right thing. You know, they had the Instagram, which is a, you know, instant video communications. And uh, now they introduced a thread uh, and uh, YouTube is, uh, I say, lacking uh, ability to, uh, it's, uh, it's made really more for, uh, I'd say, attorneys talking to each other, you know, and not circuits because it doesn't have a simple way like a Zoom with their uh, whiteboard and so on that you can communicate. And that's another thing which I hope we will do in the future. I didn't do it today because I like to make interaction because nothing uh, better than actually interacting. So uh, YouTube, Zoom has a, essentially this uh, uh, whiteboard and, uh, and you can use a, to draw on it. And you guys can also use a white, whiteboard to make you a question, you know, draw the circuits because I can't do that, you know, in YouTube, as I said, you know, everybody can make comments and so on, but it's uh, up in the air. You cannot simply explain it to say, this is wrong, this is right, this is what I use and so on. You know, it doesn't, doesn't allow you for a, a, really for a circuit people and so on. Eventually, you know, hopefully that uh, uh, Zoom can correct it. I also had a, uh, my Zoom, uh, without you knowing, but all my lecture today is not just uh, uh, recorded as a video, but actually it's recorded as a text. I paid the top dollars because what I wanted to do is as I'm making presentation, I wanted to be automatically translated to text. What I also did, I have joined with, the, I have a um, iPad, a latest version and uh, of, uh, of Apple and also I have the Apple 14. And the good news there is I now communicate much easier. I'm a two, uh, fastest two finger typist in the world, but that's a way, way too slow, you know? So what I, I now can use on a, on a iPhone 14 and also on this iPad, I can talk to it. In fact, I'm going to see today my local TIG mobile guys to see how to do it. So I can talk to it, it's translated to text and I, I'm reading what is uh, made and then just send the email. Much better way to communicate. Then also I have this latest, the Samsung uh, has this uh, uh, fold for beautiful. Forget about this uh, uh, cell phone that I have and you all have, and then you have this, uh, to have to scroll up and down across left and right to see the whole message, you open it, uh, double screen and suddenly if you're on a YouTube you have all the other options for YouTube you want to jump to it and you have a whole screen there and then uh, uh, you can enlarge it and, and do whatever you, you want and you uh, the text you don't need to scroll left and right and scroll up and down everything is there you know so and it's not that uh, much more expensive so it's uh, the tools are fantastic now that you can access and I'm trying to introduce in my course the best tool which will make uh, uh, this uh, very uh, how say, very easy to follow you know and um, and of course uh, my I'm actually now using my studio uh, which is a surface studio it's a big I don't know 36 inch screen but that uh, that I can use a pen you know and draw this on a screen so I don't have to use a I, mean, I didn't do it today because I knew I won't have a time because that takes a time, you know, but all my lectures are actually having a, uh, and, and you will find out a lot of this already posted on my YouTube when I made uh, lectures and I recorded and I didn't record the whole two or three hours, but I recorded, a, uh, made a summary of 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So there are a lot of the snippets on YouTube that you can go from my past lecture and actually learn. A lot of this video are there to learn, but uh, you know, people are ignorant. You know, <laughs> when I gave a website uh, uh, rep presentation and I gave them ahead of a time what I'm going to talk and uh, presentation and so on. And you know what was disappointing? Uh, 150 people apply for it. And then what, 20 or 30 show up. You know this is responsible. So why why did you bother to uh, sign up if you don't if you didn't want to take it? You know what I'm saying. But uh, nowadays engineers want quick results. You know, and 
And that's a problem because they don't want to put a time into understanding things. And that's why we have a problem that we have now this industry, which is uh, hugely dependent on, uh, I would say, capable engineers to design new system. There are no people who are educated. That's a problem. It's a huge problem. Those people in my generation and maybe a few decades younger than me, they already retired, you know, and so, and all the knowledge went with them. So that's why, you know, consider yourself lucky uh, to get to my course and because I'm trying to make everything possible that anybody in the world, uh, poor or, or rich, uh, can learn. But you do have to have a desire to learn. And then the key is, as always, I don't think in the future will be, did you get the uh, bachelor's degree or master's degree at Stanford, Berkeley, Caltech, uh, Harvard, or so on. I don't think that's going to be any more important. What's going to be important is who was your teacher? Because more, more or less, the future of the education is going to be online, trust me. And especially now when I can have online, I already paid the online extra to have 500 people join to it, okay? And where we are now today, look, you know, of course, part of that is my my problem with the with this uh, how I say um, hacking and all this uh, evil people that you saw today. That you know, it out of this uh, six uh, of you, there is a one evil guy. So hopefully, you know, what do you expect? When I have two hundred people in my uh, online course, uh, then have a 20, uh, 20 evil people trying to uh, how I say. But now at least. Thanks to you, uh, we both learned how we can kill them right away. You know, <laughs> except now next time when I give a lecture, I said if anybody intrudes with the voice and so on, because I didn't see it because I'm busy making lectures. But you see who is on it, and you see uh, you actually told me the name of the guy was first and last name, and I didn't know how how come you see it, but I didn't see it because. You know, I was too busy talking about this pre uh, presentation, didn't know who was doing. But next time, give five assholes like this, you know, or three assholes, just tell me this guy, and, and then I'll look up, look up on my list and then just delete him, you know. There's a one click to delete him. So now I want to teach people who are really um, eager to uh, learn, and uh, and I want to get rid of this all this, uh, how do I say, evil people, you know, there are so many evil people in the world, as you know, <laughs> that's from whole world. Okay, so enough said, any other questions and uh, and uh, accept, uh, expect to hear from me very soon. And for first, uh, you get the link to this presentation and feel free because this is, since you get this link, feel free to send it to other people, colleagues and so on and say, hey, join for the next presentation uh, here is a link and uh, and will be a free website, uh, whatever, you don't have to register for it because I'm using this time while I'm perfecting this uh, uh, setup for uh, uh, Facebook and, and getting this, um, re revive my uh, uh, website and so on. Uh, use that time to really uh, get other people involved and, uh, and spread the world. You know, this is a place to learn power electronics while I'm around, okay. <laughs> Knock on the wood, <laughs> all right. So, and uh, and uh, thanks very much, guys. And uh, Andre, so, I Dr. Chuk, I have a, I have a, a technical question, but very very quickly, if you have the answer, you mentioned that the who is talking? Uh, Who's talking? Yeah. So this Asad. is Asad. Asad. Okay. Go ahead. So the the question is, you mentioned that it is uh, one of the um, converter you have that needs to no no closed loop is run open loop. But what happens when there is a transient on the output output load transient? Then how does it automatically uh, change the duty cycle that's, to? That's a beauty. That's a beauty of my converter. That's the first converter. Not only did all this. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is uh, uh, as a part of this. Uh, it is already. Is it already on my? Uh, it is already on uh, my uh, Academy Twenty Three. You just have to find it because okay. I don't think uh, I organize it. I'm trying to work to organize this material. I keep adding it and so on, and it's a lot of material. But uh, since you had that question, I will actually, as a part of the homework, 
I will actually, since this is a, in public domain already, uh, and I don't mind, you know, what I'm going to do is I have my, uh, I say, presentation, which I uh, recorded uh, as a three-part series on uh, uh, powerelectronics.com, you know, which is there, but that presentation is there and explain everything. Uh, but uh, one thing uh, that is uh, brand new in this, why this is much better than just, uh, uh, than just, uh, how I say, um, the resonant converters which are hyped up and are not uh, not doing what they were supposed to do. Uh, my converter here is uh, what I call it a uh, DC voltage converter to uh, DC load current. So it uh, uh, it is not a voltage to voltage converter, even though it does that. So you can change the voltage to whatever you need. But the most important, the current drawn from output is not dictated by the voltage and sudden change of transient that you ask. But the current, DC current on the output is uh, forcing the res full uh, sine wave current with the DC level of the current and then superpose on it is a resonant sine wave current, which is twice the peak to peak. So that, and that's why it never goes, it has a diode on the output, but diode on the output never sees a current less than zero because it's sitting on a DC load current and a sine wave current is drawn up from this. And that, that, that means uh, the sine wave current dictates uh, in the next cycle, how much uh, peak to peak current will be drawn from the converter. And if the sine wave changes from 100 amps to 10 amps, well, it will change uh, directly in a single next cycle, it will have a 10 amp DC and so on. So transient is absolutely uh, needed for this kind of convert. Uh, for the first time you are doing that kind of transient. Beauty of that is unlike uh, this three-phase and two-phase system of, of Tesla. Now I have a two-phase system, which means I need only identical converter like this, but then uh, phase shifted for half a switching period. Why? Because I have my off time, say 90%, and if I switch it for a 50% duty ratio, then what happens? One sine wave and the other phase shifted for a... a, a that uh, half a period, the two sine waves are out of phase. And guess what? The difference is uh, maybe 5% ripple. So two of them in parallel sync to each other. They create a ripple so that output capacitance is not what is usually a problem in the all converters, which is a huge capacitance on a voltage to provide a supposed a better transient, but it's actually solved by design. You know, that the converter, each uh, cycle is doing that. And what it is, you're making two identical converters and just have a pin uh, on a control circuit, which phase shift one with respect to the other. You know, I did that actually without building converter because I use the digital scopes. I save the, I save the memory uh, in it and then make another run uh, phase shifted and then use converter uh, digital uh, scope to combine these two uh, converters. So anyway, I, uh, as I said, uh, you will learn a lot about this, uh, how to use it correctly, this, uh, 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 the, uh, I say the, um, the Plex program, Plex. And then, uh, you know, I, I will share you and send you uh, up, uh, maybe organize it or send all these people who are registered now, send you this, um, simulation of both because why is this so useful because i already done simulation i already done a hard part which uh, uh, it'll take you a lot of time and a lot of knowledge to generate and now you'll get this uh, description of the converter you'll get the presentation of up uh, presentation of a single uh, converter presentation two of them uh, dual converters and then you can just play with it play the components and see how fast it is, how the transient is done, because you'll then you, I'm actually going to teach you around how to make a converter, uh, like a, a simulation program Plex actually useful and not, uh, not uh, how you say, uh, mired with all the problems. But of course, uh, you know, 
the, uh, so just follow up and uh, and yes, uh, I'll uh, I can send you this article that is uh, you know uh, it was in three part uh, series uh, put on a powerelectronics.com you know uh, website, but uh, I combine it to one and um, then use this time be between now and the next uh, uh, website lectures to learn more about this what I uh, what might be what is already there, but you may not, uh, because there's so much more material and I accept it's maybe not the best thing, you know, put in a 